right, welcome back. Okay, so this is the penultimate episode of the entire series, and it's the longest video in the series, and quite frankly, the longest video on my channel. But for good reason, mainly because we're covering a lot of stuff in this episode. Like Valentine's Day, we're wrapping up the rest of the story bits before the final episode, and we're just going to also see a few little extra bits I put at the tail end of the video, as usual. So since we've been doing the Rise uh, Lovers playthrough on this save file, we're going to be hanging out with Rise on Valentine's Day. But don't you worry, I'll be showing off all the other options for Valentine's Day at the end of the video. Which is, again, part of the reason why this video is so damn long. Yo. Oh, and we're also going to see the true effects of running a harem playthrough uh, during P4G. That will be made... The effects of that will be made very much apparent at the end. Don't you worry. And it's kind of the reason why I was running two separate playthroughs uh, on this Let's Play. Dude, chocolates are good regardless of who gives them to you. It's nice enough that you get chocolates from anyone. Doesn't matter if they're from a friend or from... Uh, doesn't matter if they're from a friend or from a girl. But hey, test scores! Those are always fun. Of course we're gonna ace them, as usual. Such is the nature of Narukami. Honestly, I don't see the whole point of the test scores at this point. Like, I don't know if Nanako gives you anything after this, and as far as, like, improving your social links at this point in the game, it's way too damn late. Because Valentine's Day is a P4G exclusive thing, and once this day is over, it fast forwards to the end of the game. So if, if you're waiting to finish up social links for this day, you're kind of out of luck. What should I do now? I'm gonna hang out here for a bit longer, but I don't know what to do. I don't think there's anything for me to do at home anyway. Oh, I got it. I'll go up to the roof or something. I'm, I'm gonna be behind the school building. You know, just because. That's a bit creepy. Most of the girls are already gone. And the only girls that are left are all about the Narakami Express. With chocolate. They want candy so much, why don't they just buy some themselves? <laughs> oh. Are you serious? This is the one day you shouldn't be buying chocolate for yourself. Screw that, chocolate's awesome. Yeah? <laughs> Kanji doesn't care. And you're clueless. Whatever. I know I'm getting some for sure today. Uh-huh. I didn't bring you any. Stop fooling yourself. I'm not that pathetic. Come on, man. Yes, you are, Yosuke. I quite a lot. From part-time workers at Genesis. That doesn't count, and you know it. The important thing is that I have any at all. You know what? That's a good way to look Hi, at it. -san. Yuki -san. I see you've got some big bags with you today. They're not for you. Wow, that's not the sound of desperation or anything. <laughs> yeah, I do have some. Right, Yukiko? Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet. I like candy. Bubblegum and Taffy, get to my sweet shop, my sweetheart Sandy. Uh, friggin' Aqua Teen. And I brought some too! Oh, are you guys handing out chocolate? Great timing! Hey! Here you go, Chie Senpai, for always being so hardworking. Oh, that's sweet of Rise. Why me? Because today's for giving out chocolate to the people you like, right? It's a great day to say thank you to all those people in your life. Not just your romantic partner. See, I like that view, Rise. I like that a lot. Rise is cool. She's so thoughtful. Must be all those years in show. Oh, but I didn't get any for Yosuke, because Yosuke sucks. Oh wait, she gave some to him. Whatever. There's none for me. Oh no, but what about the lover's path? Hey, what about him? I'll give him his chocolate later. I've got some stuff to take care of right now, but I'll call you soon. Ooh. Nice. I feel 
like everyone's super curious about who I'm going to hand my special chocolate to. If I do it now, it'll be embarrassing. Is that code for something? So, see you later. Ah, blushy blushes. This scene changes if you're doing the harem path. Well, but of course, I went just for Rise right now, so it plays out like this. Wow, her ability to avoid Otherwise, it, you know what? I'm gonna save that for when we get to it, because it's pretty good. Oh, Nato-kun! Hey, it's Naoto. Naoto's cool. What are you all doing together? What's that supposed to mean? Today's a huge deal. Ah, uh, I see. Well, if you'll excuse me. She never breaks a sweat. Oh well, Kanji. Guess we're spending time with each other today. Ooh. -hoo. Sure, why not? And you call and you give Kanji shit for like saying stuff like that. Here. Really? Damn. Attention, everyone. I have chocolates here with everyone's names on them. Please take your candy and go home. Wow. Well, I've got to go back to the end that's, and help out. That's pretty aggressive, oh, Yukiko. Here's your chocolate. Take it. Get the fuck out. Yukiko? Man, Yukiko's being even bossier than normal. Which doesn't make sense because we're not we'll dating sure her in this playthrough. Oh, this is chocolate for everyone in it. Take yours and go home. <laughs> Now see, if we were on the harem pathway, that would probably be a little- that scene would be a little bit more awkward, wouldn't it? Again, we'll get there soon enough, don't you worry. Oh, man. But for right now, we're hanging out with Rise. It's time for a very intimate beachside romance. No one can bother us here. I've got you all to myself. Ooh, frisky. Just kidding. Here, this is for you. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, it's stinky chocolate. No. Impending sense of doom. I knew you'd notice how special it is. I added durian and habanero to it. Okay, habanero might be okay, but the durian, why? Chocolate and pour it into a mold. Where's the love in that? So I added a bit of originality. I'm certain you'll like it. Uh, again, why the durian? What's the matter? I've been told durian smells like shit. Habanero, I'm slightly okay with, because I've heard of like chocolate peppers. So hard on it. I want to see your happy face. Oh. Aren't you glad, senpai? You can't back down from this. Narakami cannot run from this. Fine then. I forgive you. But you'll have to tell me what you think later. Oh good. Dodged a landmine there. Narakami almost died. But that was sweet, and they're playing it kind of dickish. Everything I can hear is the sound of the waves. It's like we're all alone in the world. I'm going to tell you my dreams. I haven't told anyone else. I want to work and go to college. I think I could study lots of things. That's a good dream. During all that, I want to have a serious relationship with a man I love and get married on a tropical island. Ooh, and nice. And live in a house with a big yard and get a big dog. I'll cook and live happily with my husband. And then when we're old, we're going to drink tea every day by the garden together. Aw, that sounds sweet, Rise. It's a nice dream. Just kidding. I'm such a weirdo. Ah. I think it's a great idea. Sounds good. Hey, don't jump to any conclusions. I didn't even say who I was talking about. Okay, really? Senpai, by a man I love, I meant you. Yeah, there you go. Right now it's just a dream, but it's important to me. So I want to make all my dreams come true one by one with you at my side. Well, you can't take that back. I know that some people might take issue with the Rise path or with the technically, or might have issue with the canon romance, but I like it. I think it makes it, I think it's nice. People I like this pairing. I 
feel like we're Adam and Eve right now. Just the two of us here. Hey, that's a reference to the lover's arcana. So, that means Adam gets to have Eve all to himself. Well, if you if you played any of the other S&T games, uh, Reese, you'd know that Lilith was Adam's first wife. So, I don't know where... I don't know how you'd feel about that little spanner in the works. Speaking of Lilith... Hey, it's, it's Marie. Holding something that's ticking and moving. It's fucking ticking! She has a bomb! Huh? Oh, yeah. Today, I can't have the nose or Margaret getting in my way. Don't worry, I got permission. Did you, though? Is Margaret really cool with this? I have chocolate. You can have it. That's moving and ticking. And apparently it smells. Yeah, it's fucking moving. That room doesn't have any eclectic Lautwitz. I did the best I could, but I don't know if it turned out any good. It's moving. Sorry. Uh, like, yeah, this is incredible. No, but thank you. Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah. You're, you're too straightforward. I, I hate you, stupid. Okay. Regardless of whether you went with the romantic path with uh, Marie or not, this still happens. Although it plays out a little differently if you did go for the romantic path. Again, we'll get to that later. Wait, it'll run away? What? Are you being... Are, are you being serious or was that... When you eat it... I think she's being serious. I want you to tell me whether it was good or not. Now. Oh my god. Did you use the compendium to make this chocolate? I think Narakami might be poisoned now. It tastes quite normal. No. Masaka! Fucking uh, You can't stop eating it. Wait, what? You ate it all? That's incredible. Are you stupid? Yeah. Uh, it, it makes I like to think perfect. eccentric is the... Uh, I like to think eccentric is the better word. It's moving in your stomach. Okay, Narakami's gonna be dead by the end of this playthrough. Actual ritual, huh? I looked it up. I thought it was some big event, you know, a turning point of your life. I'm so lame. I was fooled. I you got stupid. fooled by the Hallmark Company. But it's not like that. I I didn't make that chocolate just because I thought it was something I was supposed to. I don't get why Japan has girls give guys the chocolate. Well, I Serious, like, I feel like everybody should get chocolate or candy regardless of the gender. Like, both parties should give each other candy. Because can everybody deserves something sweet from the one they love. I don't know. That's just me. The truth. Look, just close your eyes. And Rise walks in. Shut up and close them. Don't you do anything suspicious. Thank you. Well, I don't really get it. I won't forget about you. Ever. Yeah, Nar yeah, Narakami has that effect on people. What if Rise just walked by and going like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Dojima residence. Of course, Dojima's away on business. What else is new? Hey, it's Nanako. Hey, Do you know what day it is today? Give your big bro chocolate day. <laughs> Valentine's Day. Ding, ding, ding. You are correct. Yay, what do we win? This is my favorite chocolate. Aww. Just the sweetest little... Just, just the sweetest character. Like, I, I can't honestly find any fault with Nanako. My teacher said... Like, she's just the best. Valentine's Day isn't just, just a little ray of sunshine every it's time she shows up. Except for when the bad things happen. Then it's really sad. Even me. Yay! When she gave it to me, she said, It's been tough for you, but you've done very well. You know, coming back from the dead and everything. You came back from the dead, Nanako. Thank you back. And I said, I think you deserve more than just chocolate. Rooting for me, and that's why I can be happy again. Oh. Really? And then my 
teacher was so happy. I bet she was. When someone's cheering you on. Oh man. I don't think anyone can physically be not happy when Nanako's right there. Yes, the correct answer is yes. If you press not really, you are a monster. Me too. When you root for me, I get so Anyone who presses not really clearly is just either trying to like play the troll option or is just a dick. Don't do that. Even if you go back soon, I hope you're happy. I had one more chocolate. I made it myself. Oh, that's sweet. Oh dear god, it's slime. She literally made slime from the fucking compendium. It has no smell at all. The big girls taught me how to make homemade chocolate creations. Oh god. That's why I made one for you. No. <laughs> Who taught her how to cook? Oh no. Oh, you fucking whore. Oh, no. Gia said I should mix an iced coffee to add flavor. Okay, it's all right oh, so far. And bacon, since everyone likes bacon. Fuck, Chie. There was some bacon and iced coffee in the fridge. God, come on, Chie. Use your Gia fucking head. Gia said that the chocolate should assert itself. So it needs to be either really sweet or really spicy. I can agree with that. You're a grown-up, big bro. So I thought you'd appreciate a bitter taste. So I put bell peppers and wheatgrass juice in it. That's not chocolate, it's Nanako! Sour chocolate sounds really assertive. So I added vinegar and ponzu sauce too. Why? Nanako, you cook for yourself. You How do you think this is a good idea? If I added fish. Why? So I added some fish sausage and some of dad's fermented squid. Oh my god! told me she'd let me borrow a recipe book. And when I told her I was already done, she told me that you'd enjoy anything that I did. Oh, Naoto, you were too late. Too late, Naoto. Oh. Um, big bro, thank you. I love you. Okay, I said this with Risei. There is literally no running from this. You have no options. Fuck you. Oh, God. You can't run from this. And then Narakami died. Of course he d Oh god. Oh, what's wrong, big bro? Dun 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 Anna. Dun dun dun. <laughs> and then Igor gives you the game over message going like, Yeah, you're fucking dead. I can't work with this. I'll send you back to the past to try to fix this. Oh my god. The girls corrupted Nanako. You, Naoto was too late to, you know, actually be of help. Damn it. Oh. Morning. You two are terrible. Why'd you tell Nanako to put all that shit in there? You two are awful. Stop cooking. Yukiko was, was, like, getting better at the end of her social link. She should know a little bit better than not at all. What's up? Whatever. Mm. Oh, why we gotta bring it down mm. like this? Try not to think about it, yeah. It's, it's we're gonna be rough. We still have some time. <laughs> hey, it's the original four from the beginning of the game. Well, Pretty appropriate. Go. Who you start with is who you end with. Except for not my battle party. My battle party only has one of the original four. So, it's playing the, uh, it's playing the intro music. It's playing the title screen music. So you know what that means. Time for a fast-forward montage. So hey, we went back skiing with Nanako! Hooray! Learn how to cook with Nanako to teach her better.
Hey, we take a big photo of the whole team, but it's 3D and not animated. Interesting. That's a good photo. Oh, well, we're at the end of our journey now. We're all packed up and we're about ready to go. We'll be returning to the city in two days. Well. This scene seems a little familiar. It's the same one that we got from all those bad endings, only it looks a lot happier. That old man and his dog are still walking. Cherry blossoms! Or those are butterflies. No, they're cherry blossoms. They look like butterflies from a certain angle. Tomorrow is finally the day you will part with everyone. I'm packing? Well, if you forget anything, I'll mail it to you. Well, that's nice. Can I go answer the door? Oh, yeah. That's right. Sure. Go answer it. There's nothing to worry about anymore. I guess. I'd still be a little cautious, Dojima. Seeing her so cheerful like that... Nothing makes me happy. It does put a smile on your face, doesn't it? I already it? bought your train ticket for tomorrow. It leaves at 9 o'clock in the morning from Yasuita bus station. Today's your last day here. Don't worry about Nanako. You can leave her to me. Go see your friends. This might be your last chance to talk to them. Uh, well, this is the last day in Inaba. I told you, this is the penultimate episode. After this, it's the finale. So now we kind of just have to wrap up a few more uh, loose ends before we leave Inaba. So now, this part of the episode is just saying goodbye to all your uh, all your friends and all your social link buddies. I just kind of ran around all of Inaba just finding people. So hey, Hisano is the first one up. I thought she left, but whatever. It's always nice to see Hisano. Goodness, I am so happy. Yay! It's good to see Hisano happy. <laughs> this whole uh, saying farewell to all your social link buddies is kind of just a nice little resolution. That it's kind of just a nice little. Resolution to all their social links. Kind of a nice little wrap-up. Showing how much they've grown due to Narakami's influence. I like it. It's very nice. Wow, that's... that's pretty grim. Yay! They live together! Hooray! Good. Good. <laughs> Just as long as we don't get any depressing shit in this episode, I'm fine. Yeah, there you go, Hisano. Good, good, good. Lord knows this social link needed a little bit of levity to it. Yeah, 
This is a nice little resolution to... This is a nice little resolution to the Death Arcana. Interesting that we're starting off with the Death Arcana as our first of many goodbyes. Because in the tarot deck, death is not really actual death, it's the beginning of something new. Oddly appropriate, considering that this is going to be the end of our journey. And, well, after P4G, there's going to be a lot of new shit that follows it, story-wise at least. Like with P4 Arena, or P4 Arena Ultimax, or Dancing All Night, or Persona Q. Wait, Persona Q doesn't matter at all. I'm going to keep saying Persona Q doesn't matter because it really fucking doesn't. Like, gameplay-wise, it's okay, but story-wise, honestly, you're not missing anything. Play it and find out, or watch a YouTube video. Anyway, enough about PQ. Who cares? I'll see you again. Hisa knows all right, and she's feeling a lot better about her life, so... Mission accomplished. Such is the power of Narakami. But we still got a bunch more friends to say goodbye to. And we gotta go say goodbye to all of them. We can't leave anybody hanging on our last day in Inaba. So, off to Juness! Our good old buddy Adachi used to loiter around here all the time. Trying to avoid that old lady, but now he's in prison. Hey, it's Yosuke and Teddy. Hello. Strangely enough, this one isn't voiced. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure how this would play out if Yosuke's uh, social link wasn't maxed out. I assume it would still happen because you're friends with Yosuke, but... So far, all these goodbyes are with uh, social links that you've maxed out. I mean, Teddy's is one that automatically, uh, Teddy's is one that automatically works on itself, but Yosuke, you kind of have to put a little effort into. That was a while ago, wasn't it, Teddy? That was toward the very beginning. These are the first three party members. If you count Teddy as a, if you count Teddy as a navigator as a party member, I guess. Honestly, Yosuke, you won't have to worry about that for long, considering, like, P4 Arena, like, considering Persona 4 Arena takes place, like, I think a few months after this. And Dancing All Night doesn't take place much longer after that. Like, they're trying to make a big deal of Narukami leaving, but he's not going to be gone for that long. I guess the spoiler for that is... There are other games in the Persona 4, uh, series. And the fact that it can be called a series now, instead of just one game and a remake. Best friends gotta fight sometimes. Really, Teddy? I would crush you. Hell, the first episode whenever Narukami met Teddy was to just lightly tap him and he just fell on his ass and he couldn't get up like a damn turtle. Uh, Teddy would get crushed. So I have no idea why he tried picking a fight with Kanji in the last update. I don't know. I would- I should say so, Teddy. You grew a fucking body inside yourself. And why are you not in your human form right now? Like, I don't get that. Teddy says he's- he's like completely naked while he's wearing the bear suit. So why, I mean, I guess he's working at, at Juness as the mascot right now, but honestly, I, I don't get it. Like, why would you not, why would you not pick to work as, the, like, the handsome Bishonen guy, like, all the time? I love you. Love is kind of strong, Teddy, but we love you too. Despite the numerous fucking bear puns. Okay, really? I'll take my outfit off for you, and get super naked. Jeez, Ted. 
I'm gonna get super naked for you, sen for you, sensei. So of course, we still got quite a few more friends to go meet up with. <sighs> Teddy has work. Work that Teddy is going to constantly shirk off. Up next, let's go to Yasugami High. It's spring break, but there are still kids who are at the high school. I have no idea why. Honestly, if it was me, I'd... Honestly, if I was on a break, I'd be as far away from school as possible. But hey, I! Let's hang out with I. I, Social Link, was... Very awkward. Here's an interesting fact. If you are in a relationship with one of the female characters, their dialogue changes accordingly whenever you do the uh, goodbyes. And that's actually gonna be one of the uh, extra bits I throw in toward the end of the video. But we'll get to that soon enough. Yeah, remember that time that I wanted to kill myself? Good times. No, it wasn't, I. That was not a fun time. I'm glad that we've managed to resolve that. And tons of other horrible things. Is that asshole who slapped I still running around the school? I hope his ass got kicked. Like, severely. Like, I hope we just, like, had Narakami just off-screen beat the shit out of him. And then Kanji rocks in, he's like, Yo, senpai, you need help beating the shit out of this guy? And then they just start beating the hell out of him. That's a bit violent, but that dude was a scumbag. So Ai's personality has taken a massive 180. At first she was all about herself and she had a lot of issues, but hey, now she's cool. She wants to become a nicer person. That's always a nice goal. I think you're plenty nice right now though, I. but you know, it's a nice goal. Everybody should work to become a uh, nicer person. Yeah. Everybody should be nicer. It's just a good little mindset to have. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine what would happen if I was on the Midnight Channel? We'd have a new party member. I'm curious of what Ai's uh, weapon would be if she was a party member. Because I think one of uh, the original concepts for Rise looked a lot like Ai, and she was using like a ball and chain as a weapon. Or just chains in general. It was pretty cool, I gotta say. That was a pretty neat, uh, that was a pretty neat concept. I don't know, that'd be, it'd be kind of nice to see, like that would have been a nice little addition. Like if they did it Tales of Vesperia style, which we'll never get for PS3 in the States. If uh, in P4G, if they added a new party member to the team, as opposed to having Marie as just a skill card dealer. I don't know. One of your social link buddies could be, uh, what are your social link buddies to be a new party member? I don't know. Although that might feel a little, that might feel a tad tacked on. But hey, let's talk to Naoto. Naoto's cool. Oh, Naoto's depressed now. I should hope not, Naoto, because, you know, the town was almost consumed by fog. And the apocalypse almost happened. Hard times. Hard times, baby. I 
I guess that it would be natural for someone like Naoto to be a, feel a little uh, anxious about not having anything to do. You know? Especially after you went through the TV world and did all that crazy shit, I yeah. Apologize. Kinda going back to the usual piece of everyday life does make things seem a tad boring. And suddenly Naoto starts throwing people in the TVs like Adachi. <laughs> nah, Naoto wouldn't do that. Naoto's cool. I wonder if Naoto's gonna show up in P5. That'd be so awesome. Like, I know they already have a detective character with, uh, with Goro, but come on. Like, in Persona 4 Arena, Naoto's been hanging out with the Kiridro group. So she's clearly not, she, she's clearly staying up to, like, she's clearly still getting involved with shadows and shit like that. You'd think if she heard shit about, like, the Phantom Thieves, that would be totally her bag. Like, after all the adventure novels or spy fiction stuff she's read, you'd think she'd totally be all into that. That would be such an awesome boss fight, like, fighting Naoto, and she has, and, uh, she has Yamato Sumaragi, and she just totally sweeps you. Because she's from the previous game, and she's awesome. And she has a lot more experience with handling her persona than you do. Aww. Oh. More video games should have previous uh, player character boss fights. Like, that's why Devil May Cry 4 was so awesome, because you fight Dante. Or that's why Digital Devil Saga was awesome, because the Demi Fiend was a boss character. He was the super boss and one of the hardest boss fights in, like, JRPG history. Oh, it was freaking rad. I was kind of just looking for people. Like, some people might be in odd places here and there. No one in our homeroom. Surprising, I would figure at least one person would be here. But no, we need to go to the practice building. Because we gotta say hi to Yumi. Again, if you wanted to see Ayane's uh, social link, I apologize. You know, I, I had my reasons for picking Yumi. Just like I had my reason for picking Daisuke as opposed to Ko. But you do kind of see Ko's social link build as you help out Daisuke. You can go watch Team Four Stars playthrough of uh, P4G. They're handling Ko and Ayane. But at this rate, I'm not sure how far in the social links they're going to get, but Godspeed to Taka and Zito. Godspeed to both of them. They're not running a New Game Plus playthrough like I am. So... I wish them the best of luck in that. So hey, Yumi's gonna join the student council. That's pretty cool. To keep the gas masks? Well, gee, that, that ruling's probably not gonna stick because we got rid of the fog. I got rid of it. It was inside this weird anime girl and we fought her and then the fog went away. So no more fog. Like, <laughs> like imagine if, if Narukami just said that to the people who were selling the gas masks. <laughs> like, he said that to the government. He said that to the local government of uh, Inaba. 
There is no more fog, so there's not gonna be any need for gas masks, because I beat up a weird anime girl that had the fog inside her, and now it's gone. I think Dojima would have to arrest Narakami for being fucking crazy. That's a good goal, Yumi. Everybody has new goals. They have strong goals to uh, work towards. I like this. I like this. Everybody's progressing very well. You know? All thanks to Narakami. Narakami's helping everybody. Everybody becomes a better person. Hey, but since we're not dating Yumi, you know, she wants to find a new boyfriend. You ran away when I asked you in the first place. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, Narakami has ruined men for her. Like no other man is like, no one is nearly cool enough to fill Narakami's shoes. Because of course not, because this is Narakami. So I've already heard that Atlas is like, like waiting for ID, is asking uh, its fans, do we want like an updated version of Persona 5? Do we want a fighting game? Do we want a completely new Persona game? Or do we want something else entirely? I talked about this like in the last update, I believe. Like, I don't know how they would handle like Persona 5 Platinum. And I still don't know how they do it. But anyway, Saiko is not here. But back to what I was saying. I guess I I thought that they weren't doing any more Persona games for a bit. Like, because they had that... Because they had that new series coming out. Personally, I'd rather have a new Persona game. Like, I'd rather have Persona 6 come out after this. Or maybe, you know, like a spin-off fighting game. Because Persona 4 Arena is awesome. Uh, an updated re-release of Persona 5? That might be cool. As long as it doesn't get delayed as much as the original did. I don't know. So Psycho's applying herself and is basically working out in Africa. Interesting. Psycho's trying to help the world. Oddly noble for a character of the devil, Arcana. She had a boyfriend, though. A very young one, too. They, they, I wonder if they're going to turn around and see Narakami. Wow. A full-grown adult trying to live up to a high schooler. Interesting. Remember when that's how that social link started and how like Saiko was constantly hitting on Narakami? Like really aggressively hitting on him? Like with possible inclinations towards sex? That was a bit of a weird start. But hey, Saiko's working hard in a foreign country. So, all right, cool. Good on Saiko. Her life has been changed for the better. Alright, we still got plenty more social links to resolve. 
Hey, the other options were the hill overlooking the town and the Amagi Inn. So I guess Yukiko's not in town right now. So hey, it's Ari and Yuta. Remember how long this took to finish this social link? Remember how that was a running trend for this series? My goodness. <laughs> so many trips to the shrine just to work on this social link alone. My goodness. I thought you guys weren't coming back here ever again. Let's talk with Aerie, considering she's the social link, uh, partner here. He's still got that weird- he's still got that weird run. Well good, Yuta's improving. Good to know. You do know that the criminal behind those incidents was a cop, right? How do you feel about the fact that it took so long to get the actual culprit right? Like, the first one was Mitsuo, and that one didn't go anywhere. Because he pretty much flat out admits it's doing something he didn't do. Well, he killed Moroka, but he didn't kidnap anybody. And then Namatame was, like, the culprit, but it, he wasn't really, he just kidnapped people. And the actual culprit behind two murders was a cop. That, that's gotta feel a little nerve-wracking, huh? Like... Part of the law enforcement in Inaba was a horrible murderer who had access to the TV world, but no one really knows about that part. All I'm saying is, uh, it's all I'm saying. And the culprit was Adachi. Fucking Adachi. Have you seen that guy? He's a schmuck. That dude was a complete chuckle fuck. Honestly. Thank you. Well, good. I'm glad that the Temperance Arcana has resolved itself quite nicely. Everything's good with Aerie. Well worth the wait and the immense amount of work I had to put into this social link. This was a long social link to get a persona that I never use. Anyway, we still have to use the bus stop again to go see, uh... Yukiko. Because she's at the Yamagi Inn this time around, instead of where she normally is. She's usually in front of the bookstore or she's in the high school, but here, hey, she's in her kimono. Look! Jack Frost soda at the front of the door! Look at it! Look at Jack Frost! He's saying hee ho! Oh, Yukiko, your social link was... Your social link was pretty interesting, because it had a bunch of dirtbag uh, reality TV show assholes on it. Oh, why you gotta bring it down like that, Yukiko? Well, technically I brought it down like that by saying goodbye, but you know, whatever. Narakami isn't helping, is he? Oh, man. Well, shit. 
No one else called me an asshole. Whoa, okay. I guess Yukiko's coming with us. <laughs> oh, no, never mind. She's kidding, for now. Um, you realize I'm dating Rise right now, right? Like, you know that currently in this playthrough, she's, she's the girlfriend, right? This isn't the harem playthrough. <laughs> Well, that's sweet. Everybody always says you'll be in my heart. They always bring up that Phil Collins song from Tarzan. I kind of like that song from Tarzan. I don't know why. I just think it's a very sweet song. Was Tarzan that great of a Disney movie? Eh, it had its moments. You know, it was... It was alright. You know, it's not my favorite Disney movie, but... I like that song that they sing. But then again, I'm kind of a sap for those kind of things. I don't know. And I'm not the hugest Phil Collins fan, but for some reason that song was... It was okay. It wasn't bad. Thanks. Wasn't bad. You'll forever be my precious friend. I bet she says something different if you went for the lover's path. Guess we'll have to find out toward the end of the video. Oh, but she's so sad in her portrait art. Oh well, still got more people to say goodbye to. A lot more people. We're gonna save Margaret over there for last. Cause she's my waifu. Chie's social link was a bit of a, a bit of a ride, wasn't it? There was bullying, there was, there was extortion, there was that asshole old friend of hers, you know? Chie wants to be a cop. How to become a police officer. All right, there you go. That sounds awesome. A kung fu cop. A cop will just kick a motherfucker in the face. Not using guns, just using martial arts. Go talk to Naoto and Dojima. I'm sure they'll throw you through, uh, I'm sure they'll show you the ropes. Have Dojima put me through the ringer. Really? The sad thing is, if he does, he'll be spending more time with Chie than his own daughter. Oh man. So that was. That resolves things with Chie for now. Again, we'll see a more romantic version toward the end of the video. You know, this I can kind of understand because Rise is a celebrity who can go wherever the fuck she wants. Hey, Rise is going back to showbiz, starting in spring. Take that, Konami! You got nothing compared to Rise. Seriously, in Dancing All Night, Konami is not even close. I know Rise has a different voice actress in that game, but you know, still, Rise is like a thousand times better than Konami. 
Honestly, all of the characters in Dancing All Night, like, don't really compare to Risei, or Nanako for that matter. That game was weird. That was a weird fucking game. You do dance battles with shadows. And somehow the dance battles in Dancing All Night weren't nearly as epic as the dance battles in the Yakuza series. I know that's a bit of a weird pull, but hey, they're both from Sega. Who cares? Risei's got the blushy blushes, as usual. So when we get to the romantic so when we get to the romantic goodbyes at the end of the video, Risei's is probably gonna be the only one that doesn't change. Because we date her in both playthroughs. Don't worry, Risei will make a big old dumb music video with all the team with all the uh, party members and dancing all night. Seriously, they make a big, dumb music video in Dancing All Night with all the party members and all of the uh, victims you have to save in that game. It's really weird. Although, one of the cool things in Dancing All Night is that they actually let you dance with Margaret. That's pretty cool. Hey, we haven't seen Shu in a while. It's been a while since we've done tutoring. I think we finished his social link like freaking last year, honestly. Well, no, wait. It's 2017. And I started this back in 2015. Huh. Well then. This series has been going on for quite a while, but don't you worry. It's, it's gonna be done. Oh boy, it's just this video in the finale, and a little extra video at the end. So, I'm getting close to having it done. Uh, this series should have been done way sooner than this. Whatever. Oh hey, Shu made a friend. That's cool. Oh, it's the transfer student. Hey, they became best friends now. That's awesome. Good. I'm I'm glad that the Tower Arcana resolved itself very nicely, because you'd think out of all the other Arcanas that would end terribly for the for that uh, representative, Shu would have it the worst because he represents the Tower, and the Tower is universally like the worst card you can draw. I went over this quite a few updates ago, but still, the Tower sucks if you get it a four, if you get it a tarot reading. If you get the tower in a tarot reading, just fucking leave. Just say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm out of here. This is some bullshit. Yeah, of course Narakami's tutoring was awesome. But again, this went by a lot quicker due to the New Game Plus stuff. Because maximum stats. He'll go so far, he'll reach your train and break through the window and hit you in the head. And that, and that way you'll never forget about me. Wow. Must have been scary though with those murders. Yeah, Narakami must have bad luck from the fucking tower representative. That doesn't feel great, Shu. Uh, it's a nice little nod, though. I like to think that's a nice little nod. Still gotta go hang out with some more people. We have a lot- we did a lot of social links. Hey, it's Marie. Let's hang out with Marie.
Okay, Marie, this doesn't really work with you because you're a goddess who can kind of just go wherever she wants. You fucking stay in the velvet room. Like, uh, like a fucking train ride is not really going to impede you that much. Like, I'm sure Margaret could get, uh, like, all the way around the world in, like, a minute flat. Fucking her sister Elizabeth went to the fucking moon. Like, like with no helmet or any kind of spacesuit or spaceship. She didn't need any of it. The fuck is a train ride to you? But then again, I guess Marie's a bit different from Margaret and Igor. I don't know. She's got that Velvet Room hat, so I assume she has some benefits of it. I don't know. But then again, Marie's a goddess who can just summon lightning. I I'm pretty sure she can, like, like a bit of transport, like a bit of distance isn't really that much to her. So Marie's social link ended with a big dumb dungeon that we did in the last update, which wasn't really... Which was, uh... Yeah. But hey, Daisuke and Ko are in the restaurant. Let's go hang out with them. Seriously, guys, there are other restaurants in Inaba. You can eat somewhere else. Whoa. Find another place to eat. You know there's a tofu shop down, like, a couple blocks that has Risei Kujikawa working in it, right? Like, are you guys not into idol culture? Because if you are, that's kind of the place to be. Why you gotta blurt that stuff out? It's embarrassing, man. So yeah, the strength social link. That was that was a bit of a that was a bit of an interesting run, trying to get Daisuke over his ex girlfriend. When it seems like Ko's social link was a little bit heavier than Daisuke's. Like yeah, Daisuke's is pretty damn heavy. Like I'm I'm oversimplifying it, saying get over his ex girlfriend, but it's really getting over himself and like this huge fucking restraint he puts on himself that like he's putting this huge self-imposed like boundary in front of himself I guess I should say it's it's a lot more complicated than I'm making it out to be but long but it, you know long story short we got Daisuke out of a slump so now he's given 110% so yeah we're good everything resolved itself pretty well Time to suck it up. Well, I guess I'm gonna go back and polish some more balls. That's a funny joke, right? Me polishing balls? That's what I do. I'm Ko. That is probably my favorite joke in that Heems Day comic. Fucking Ko saying like, I love them balls. And then he's like, and fucking Daisuke, who I guess was voiced by Antfish, is going like, Dude, you gotta stop polishing those balls. And then Ko's like, I can't stop, man, these balls are on fire. Oh! And then Narukami just runs away. I think that's probably one of my favorite jokes in that whole comic. Just because of how fucking crazy Ko sounds. Uh... Stop wearing the same damn training clothes. <laughs> oh, snap. 
Give him a nice shirt and some pants. What? Do you though? Are they? Are you sure that it's not the same tracksuit over huh? and over again? <laughs> They're being fucking silent. Dude, I like my gym pants and all, but you know, a little variety is nice. Then again, Narakami isn't one to talk, considering he, at most, he changes his outfit like maybe three times, and that's only with the seasons. But then again, you can change his costume as many times as you want if you uh, change his battle costume. Which I didn't show off that much in this playthrough, but hey. Why do you always get to say the good part? <laughs> because Daisuke was the one with the social link. Oh man. Oh no, Marie's gone. All the people you talk to are gone. Oh, I see Kanji in the distance. Yeah. Best social link in the game. Right here. Best one. The Emperor Arcana is probably my favorite Arcana. In like, all of Persona. Like, in JoJo, I know it's Whole Horse, but even Whole Horse is pretty fucking rad. Just for how, just for how, like, lame he is. Oh, Kanji is the best character. I will say this up and down the street. Kanji's the best. I sincerely hope Yusuke is, you know, just as cool, if not cooler, dare I say, than Kanji. Again. I'm super glad that Matt Mercer gets his own unique Persona character instead of just revoicing Kanji. I am, like, getting super hyped up for how Matt's gonna play that character. <sighs> Being sad I'm leaving, Kanji? Uh... I didn't pick the right option. No, but he's... he has the handicraft class. Kanji's holding knitting classes! Oh! I would totally go to that class. I would go to that class in a frickin' heartbeat. Make little stuffed animals and shit. Don't laugh. Don't laugh at Kanji. That's a man right there. That's a true man. He knows what he wants. Like, his resolve is ironclad. I would take that class in a frickin' heartbeat. Kanji's the teacher? No question. Kanji's awesome. He's the best character in this game! Like, I don't know how many times I can honestly say this, like, I, I can say it's still I'm blue in the face that Kanji's the best character in this game. He's one of my all-time favorite characters in the SMT series, and quite frankly, he's one of my favorite characters in video games, period. I love this guy, he's awesome. Out of all the characters in Persona, he gets the most character development, and honestly, he gets a lot of the best lines in this game. And as far as combat goes, he's fucking radical. Like, when Persona 4 Arena rolled around, like, you can be damn sure I picked Kanji as my go-to guy. Don't turn back around, okay? Because you don't want to see Kanji crying. Oh, Kanji. Oh, no, Kanji's gone! Oh! Alright, let's go... Let's go talk to Naoki. Naoki's alright. Naoki's social link was certainly an interesting one. Remember that one? Where we met him and at first he hated us and we talked about his sister being dead? That was an interesting social link.
He got a scooter license. See, I like that now he acknowledges that it's not a motorcycle, that it's a frickin' scooter. Cause it's a fucking scooter, Yosuke. Shut up. It's not a motorcycle, it's a fucking scooter. You nerd. Our top selling product? What is it? Handcrafted eau de toilette. Oh, you sake. That's... That's actually pretty cool. I don't know how that works, but... Honestly, I don't know how bathroom cleansers work. I just figured... to spray some Febreze. But hey, I mean... Multiple uses for alcohol. Go for it, man. I like the idea that one thing can have multiple uses. I think that's really rad. I can't drink it yet since I'm underage. Do they have courses on alcohol in college? Because I didn't see those. I mean, you drink a lot of alcohol in college. But as far as, like, studying it, I, I don't know. That might be like a science class, I would imagine. Or maybe it would be like a social class. I'm not sure. we have a little fox friend to go talk to. So many times does Narakami have to go help other people on behalf of the fox. So much bug collecting, so much fishing. It's ridiculous. place like this dude look at the shrine and look at the and look at the little offertory box it's covered in gold tearing it down it's made of solid fucking gold look at it look at the fucking shrine over there it's made of gold there are too many rumors these days aren't there Remember that one about how the fog is making everyone sick? Poppycock. Midnight Radio? That was a popular one with the kids, alright. My grandson and his friends were all into that shit. Ah, a bunch of dumb little bastards. Gonna pick up some juice for my grandkid, get him some cranberry, put some hair on his chest. Oh, the fox isn't here. It was taken to an animal shelter, no! But the fox lives here! How else am I supposed to get, like, sweet ass Emily's and discounts on, like, healing services? Feel a presence watching you. Hey, there he is! Yeah, the fox is cool! Look how cool. Oh my goodness! The fox was actually a girl! Little baby foxes! Little kits! And they all have little bibs on! Oh! That is so adorable! Look how cute they are! Little tiny kitsune! Oh! And they all charge you out the ass for healing! <laughs> it's like Tom Nook and his little nephews! Only they're foxes instead of tanukis. Or raccoons, whatever. Anyway, let's talk to Margaret. Margaret's awesome. You have come. Oh, this is voice acted though. Oh, I love the Velvet Room theme. No matter how many times I hear it, it's always so soothing. This social link was over in an episode. Because all I needed to do was just grab personas from my compendium that were already pre-made. 
This can be the hardest and the easiest social link. A goodbye kiss. <laughs> yeah. Now, close your eyes. Why, you ask? So that you don't witness my sinfulness. Oh, ho, 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 my. Why this was not a romantic mm. social link, I have... Oh, my goodness. It's really getting in there. Really getting in there. Why Margaret was not a romantic social link, I have no fucking clue. Why did I steal a kiss? Is that what you were going to ask? But it's you who was the thief. No, it's the next protagonist who's the thief. <laughs> He's all about those Phantom Thieves over there in Persona 5. Oh my goodness. I really wanted Margaret to be a romantic social link in P4G. Margaret's awesome. Like, I like Risa and all, and I've said this in the last update, but seriously, Margaret is my true waifu. But hey, we saved Dojima and Nanako for last. Because of course we did. Seriously, Margaret's just so cool. What can I say? Power is sexy. And she pulls off that blue dress like you wouldn't believe. Hey. Most of them. Did they all cry? Let me see your face. Mm hmm. Yep, they cried all right. <laughs> Like what, he's gonna have an inter- mm. Like what, he's gonna have an interrogation over how many of our friends cried? Oh, Nanako is sad. Well, she can't help it, Dojima. She's upset. The same should go to you, Nanako, honestly. Don't get sick again, that would be terrible. I don't want you dying again. She can't help it, Dojima. She really can't. Yeah, but it doesn't matter if we're apart, that's true. Don't you make be making false promises, Dojima. Don't you make false promises, don't you... Toy with that poor girl's emotions. Hmm. Big bro. No one could forget you, Nanako. You'll forget me. Again, if you pick that option, you're a monster. I don't care. Don't pick that option. It's terrible. <sighs> Why do you want to make the small girl cry? You know? Why do you want to choose the option that's going to be bad for the small child? Well, that's good. The Justice and the Hero Fund social link were both pretty interesting, weren't they? Nanako talked about death and rekindling her uh, relationship with her father. Dojimo was getting over the case of his wife getting killed in the hit and run and trying to work hard to be a better father for Nanako. Both of them very heavy topics. Very, very emotional social links. I grow up, I want to marry you, big bro. Um... Uh... Uh... If he's still available by that time, by that time you're an adult. I'm not available though right now. Okay. That won't be for a long time. Oh my goodness. Okay. I don't get the whole, like, wanting to marry your cousin thing. Like, I'm not... Like, I don't get that. So that we can marry our cousins. Why? Because they're so attractive. I thought that was the whole point of this adventure. Absolutely not. <laughs> Nevermore has that Simpsons joke been more relevant than it is here.
We've said goodbye with all the people we've formed close bonds with. Are we gonna return to our house? Nope. We still got shit to do. However, if you choose to say yes during that prompt, you immediately go to the normal ending, which I will show off at the end of the video, as usual. We don't have any reason to come here, but hey, one more stop at the food court wouldn't hurt. I'll show off the normal ending at the end of the video, which is much, much, much better than the last couple of endings we got in previous updates. We're back at our secret headquarters, which isn't really that secret, but whatever. So many memories, so many murders, so many kidnappings. Huh? What a coincidence! It must be destiny! I think it's just nostalgia. So you guys came here too! Yay, everybody's it's showing up. Very own special headquarters. There are so many memories here. Not all of them positive, Yukiko. Yo there, senpai. I thought you'd be here. Yeah, Kanji, Nato, and Risa are here. We had a feeling we'd run into everyone if we came here. We were planning on seeing you off at the station tomorrow, but I was feeling too restless, so I decided to come here. Well, since we're all here, why don't we have something to eat? Ooh, let's have steak! Steak! And make Yosuke pay for everything! Stop that, Chie! Stop it! Will you shut up about your steaks? Agreed. For once, I agree. I love steak and everything, but, you know, stop mooching off people. She's gonna use that- when she becomes a cop, she's just gonna, like, extort steak out of everyone. World. Dude, your whole existence is about fun. He's a magical bear person, Yosuke. What do you want from him? Games. But I gotta say, I've never felt so fulfilled in my life. It seems we've been working on this forever, but at the same time, it felt like it went so fast. Yeah, my upload Whatever schedule would argue the contrary. This, or tear our hair out trying to solve the mysteries. Even if we wanted to talk about it all, there were so many extraordinary things that no one would believe us. We saved the world like three times. For me, I think it all started when Chie told me about the Midnight Channel. I think I heard about it from her too. How did you learn about it, Chie? I guess it was just a random rumor. A lot of girls were trying it out. Huh. I wonder how it started then. That is a bit of a mystery, isn't it? Who knows? Maybe someone accidentally came across it? Where did the Midnight, Midnight Channel. Channel originate from? You know, that really was the cause of everything. It was, I mean, wasn't the fog it? fog lifted after we caught Adachi, but there's still a lot of stuff that isn't clear yet. It's still foggy over there, too. That's a bit of a pickle. Some weird guy might use it to do bad things again. Why you gotta bring it to that, Teddy? That's a bit of a sobering thought. Didn't that Omino something monsters say it granted us power? I bestowed power onto those who could brave the hollow forest. That's a pretty badass title words, for a very gave the not fun dungeon. TVs to those who awakened to their persona ability so that he might use us as pawns to enact his scheme. Hey, that reminds me. Didn't your hand suddenly slip into the TV even before anything happened to you? That is true. Does that mean you're an exception? Because Narakami's well, awesome. What about Adachi and Namatame? Those two could go inside TVs before all this stuff about personas, right? That is true. What? Then Senpai and the other two could do it for some other reason? It, I find it a little disheartening that Narakami, Namatame, and Adachi are all connected. That Narakami has similarities to a fucking murderer and a guy with a messiah complex. We got something from Nanako this morning. And it's playing the really suspicious hey, music. Another warning. I don't know the music. It's from fucking Adachi. Huh? This is from jail? Oh my goodness. It's from Adachi. I got prison mail, you guys. And it's playing really suspicious music. I'm sure you're surprised to get this letter out of the blue. I'm writing this because there's something I need to tell you. Fuck you. Ever since <laughs> that's all that's home, written. There are some things I understand now. 
It's true that my game's over. It wasn't a game. You were murdering Zero people. Existed at the time. I'll abide by the rules of this world. But as long as I'm in stir here, I can't clean up after myself. So I hope this will give you something to think about regarding this case. There's still this feeling I can't shake. It's about how it all started. About that midnight channel. Now I remember... Someone told me about it's a little it weird that the voice actor for Adachi and Narakami is the, the exact same finish. person, y Johnny Young Bosch. I was intrigued when I noticed that so this, similar was I know it's Adachi talking, but it well. might sound like an inner monologue to Narakami. I can't. It works both ways. That told me. Since Namatami and I both gained our power after coming to Inaba, I have a feeling that has something to do with it. I don't know if any of this will be useful or not, but I hope it can help somehow. When I'm here, I think of Dojima-san, Nanako-chan, and you. A lot. Though my time with you didn't seem like much fun before. It's strange. Despite it all, I'm grateful to you. Thank you. Aw, well that's oddly Let nice of Adachi. What? You're a dumbass. <laughs> Still gotta write that last bit in there. You take the path you choose, and I'll think about what that means to me, too. I doubt I'll ever see you again, but stay healthy. Goodbye. If I'm such a dumbass, Adachi, why are you in prison? <laughs> hey, we got Adachi's letter. We have a definite bond with Adachi. Hey, now we max out the Hunger Arcana. That took a little while. Now we have all the social links done. It took a little longer than the Accomplice ending, but hey, now we max out the Hunger Arcana. Now all the Arcanas are maxed out. And now we get Magatsu Izanagi. Cool. Now we can create all the personas. The hunger has reached its maximum. The Tempter of the Void, Magatsu Izanagi, who's actually a pretty decent persona. He called you a dumbass. to know that he can't remember who it was. I'm not sure how to put it, but I kind of know the feeling. It's like... I don't know how to say this. Like something's connecting all these things. Something beyond what we can see. That world. The midnight channel. The ability to enter TVs. They all feel like separate things. Do they? You know what I mean? First the rumors... Then the serial murder, followed by us deciding to investigate the case. If they all really were separate, they wouldn't fit together like this, right? There has to be some kind of conductor behind everything. So you think the person Adachi mentioned, the one who told him about the Midnight Channel, is that conductor? Well, who did Adachi talk to? Did I strike gold again? <laughs> it's seriously just something that popped into my head! Why don't we go visit Adachi in prison and ask Sometime. him? Is there anything like that you can think of? We have to think about where the case started. Hmm. So Adachi and Namatame had access to the Midnight Channel immediately when they got here. And then they got their powers. So something happened upon our arrival that prompted this whole game. ...last year, which we succeeded in solving. But the monster we fought last said we did well in playing our parts. Perhaps this means Adachi and Namatame were players as well. Could it be that from the beginning, this serial murder case was merely a portion of a much larger scheme? And none of the people who were directly involved in the case ever suspected it. Hey, this scheme, could it be the whole thing about filling both worlds with the fog and turning mankind into shadows? So someone was behind the scenes watching us, 
the culprits, and maybe even that monster. And he manipulated Adachi and Namatame at the very beginning, so everything would come together perfectly? That does sound like a criminal mastermind. We might find something. Although, you may be the only one capable of noticing it. Please contact the rest of us should you come across anything. We can't say our goodbyes tomorrow with this hanging over our heads. Let's go figure this out. So now we are on the path once more to solving a grand mystery of who gave us the initial spark and where the Midnight Channel originated. And the first person we talked to when we got here was uh, Dojima. So we need to go talk to Dojima about what happened on our first day in Inaba. Because it all started at the very beginning of the Let's Play. I love it when games do this shit. I love it when they pull something like all the way from the beginning of the game and make it relevant again at the very end. At this point, I kind of forgot where he was. He's at Samigawa floodplain. But at this point, I was kind of... I kind of forgot. I don't know why I forgot, because I played this game enough times to know... I played this game enough times that I should know where he is. Now I get it in my head that he's at Sanigawa Flip Lane. I don't immediately put it together that he's by the riverbank. Again, I apologize. There he is, and he brought Nanako with him. Did you already meet all your friends? Hmm? What's this all of a sudden? The first day we arrived in town. The day you first came to town? Hmm, let's see. We were the first ones to greet you, right? That was like a year and a half ago. Did we stop somewhere on the way home? I'm pretty sure Nanako and I left home that afternoon, picked you up, and came straight back. <laughs> now that I think back to that night, I was called back to work as soon as we got home, so I couldn't talk much. You always were a workaholic. And the very next day, during the entirety of the game, murder started. Sheesh. Lots happened since then. It's been one heck of a year, hasn't it? That it has. That it has. It That's done? putting it lightly. On the first day? Didn't we stop at that place? The gas station. I used the bathroom there. When I got back to the car, you were talking to the weird attendant. Yeah, when I first met you, I remember the gas so station. So this started at the gas weird. station. I don't know if I could remember that for, like, that over an entire you, year ago. That. Seriously, that's I a hell of a memory on Nanako. Off. Honestly. Uh, yeah, I, I do remember you talking to the attendant there. I didn't remember seeing him much before, so he stuck in my mind. But I don't know about calling him weird. It wasn't like he looked or acted funny. That's very rude of you, Nanako. Yeah. Come to think of it, I, I never saw that guy again. I saw that guy a bunch of times throughout the playthrough. It wasn't really that the attendant looked weird. He only showed up during the rain. But after you talked to him, which is you sick, big bro. interesting. So we looked sick after we talked to the gas station attendant. I asked you on the way home. And as I showed off in a lot of the uh, previous updates, that same gas station attendant only showed up when it was raining. He was just a little scary for some reason. A scary gas station attendant. I didn't know about that. Huh. But honestly, I'm surprised you're asking all these questions. I thought you came here just to reminisce. We already reminisced, Dojima. So why are you looking for the person you met first? Is something going on with that attendant? Do you know him? It might be super important. Just remember that you leave tomorrow. I don't know what you're up to, but you should come back home early. There are some dark clouds on the horizon. We might get some rain soon. That's ominous. Okay. So the first place we stopped was at the gas station. I guess we're going back there now. But 
first, to the Velvet Room! We have some more interesting stuff to handle first. Welcome to the Velvet Room. What's up, How Igor? How may I help you? You have solved the mystery and deflected the disaster that so nearly fell upon you. We are Is pretty awesome, aren't we? Beyond this, you need our assistance with? I wanted to thank you again. My, what a well-mannered young man. We are most obliged to your kindness. Because you gotta say thank you to Igor. Igor is awesome. To show such consideration. We are here to serve Oh, Dan Warren, I'm gonna miss you in Persona 5. Is there something on your mind that led you here? I know I said David Lodge is gonna be voicing Igor in Persona 5, but you know... Well then, uh, let's take a look and see what it is you might be sensing. Dan Warren's cadence and just his, like, delightful little uh, tone is just amazing. That's a lot. So we had glass in our head? Ah, this is a surprise. These are shards of power. A you had glass in your head. The truth of things. You that should probably go to a hospital. Rumors. Interesting. Indeed, you have come here today for a reason. Then I shall play my part as well. Oh, okay, cool. That is a crystal of power which you have nurtured through your journey. It's pretty An bright. That repels fabrications of all sorts, dispels lies, and shines upon the truth. Hey, cool, I'm a seeker of truth, so that could be very useful for me. Orb of Sight. Hey. I remembered something about myself. This wasn't in the original. A long, long time ago. I was... The unconscious wish shared by people's minds. To protect the world of man. Walk the path of man. Fulfill the wish of the world. That was my role, but people changed. They do tend to change over the course of a hundred or so years. Or maybe they just stopped paying attention. Eventually, the me that wanted to protect humanity and the me that wanted to fulfill humanity's wish couldn't stay as one. The desires of man had no bounds and one day, my other half became its own existence much larger than myself so marie was once part of a much larger being with no power or memories i became a tiny fragment incapable of even clearing the fog without giving my own life to do so kusumi no okami the rest you already know without my powers i became a tool manipulated by the other me you already know huh the cause of it all. The one who created the Midnight Channel and gave you the power to enter the TV. The real Puppet Master. Who tried to fill both worlds with fog. Using me and the Sagiri. If you don't defeat her... So the mastermind behind all of this is Marie's other half. Be truly clear okay. The fog. Go. Follow what you believe in. The truth is right in front of you. Truth is a thing which only appears to those who have observed, considered, and made a choice. At the end of the path you chose lies the truth. Believe in it, and continue without faltering. <laughs> How marvelous. I like it's to think Margaret and Igor weren't really paying attention to what Marie said. End. One beyond our predictive power. Now go to the place where everything began. The gas station. Really? The, the gas station is where it all began. Okay. So it started raining. But hey, we're going back inside the velvet room. Because important stuff. Margaret's by herself now. Welcome to the velvet room. I wonder how many times it's been that we've seen each other. This like is a new game plus Apparently, exclusive. We met for a purpose after all. Do you remember? The Velvet Room is inseparable from the heart of its invited guest. The shape of the room and its residents are selected by my master, based on the number of guests and the destiny. 
but my predecessor is gone from this place for a completely different reason. She's talking about Elizabeth. Leave. She left of her own will to accomplish her own ends. Such a thing could Although, happen I gotta wonder. to the Velvet Room. So I wish to know the reasons behind it. My ultimate aim was to bring She's talking about Elizabeth right now, but and return her here. Where's Theo? To do so. Like he's I a resident of the Velvet Room, room too. And I felt that the key Quite frankly, where's the rest of the Velvet Room with residents? But like now, the singer or the painter I'm or more the pian or the pianist. Say whether her choice in fact was I don't know, they're all gone. All residents of the Velvet Room are destined to find themselves. It was true for her as well. Why did she suddenly give up on her quest? That was my greatest worry. But then again, maybe my premises were flawed. Maybe she found her answer and so left this place. In which case, my role is not to blindly bring her back. What was it that she gained? And who am I? What I may receive from you will most likely show me the answer to those questions. That is why Faye did not bring a guest who only talks, but one who holds... Ironic, considering master. Narakami doesn't talk. I would like to issue a request to you. Not as my master's guest, but a personal request from me to you. Would you fight a match against me? Okay, so... I won't Super boss! Of course. It's Margaret! There's no reason for you to go that far. <laughs> you wanna fight... Well, Here's a New Game Plus exclusive. I might you get to fight Margaret. Destiny. But encounters always bring you get to fight to Margaret, and she's the fucking if super boss of this game. You will surely gain something so we're gonna be doing that in the next Please update. Consider the offer carefully so, making your decision. and she's not easy. To she's the hardest advice. boss in this game. Bring this to me, where I will wait. She is quite difficult. So we got Margaret's invitation, an Aqua invitation, one might say. So remember, whenever I went to the end of each dungeon and fought those, like, recolor shadows at the end of each again. one and got special items. If you didn't do all those, you don't get to fight Margaret in this playthrough. You had to do them all before uh, talking to Margaret. So hey, there's the gas station attendant. Isn't this where I first... We don't have an opening yet. Go somewhere else. Does the attendant know Namatame? Did the attendant meet those two? For a long time. Okay. How long have you been here? Is my question. Oh, someone's getting a little defensive. I'm a paying customer. Why don't I talk to you all I want? My scooter needs a refill. Hop to it, bus boy. Did you do anything to them? Uh, it's playing the suspicious music. That's not good, or is it? Are you sure that's all? Just that. What did you do to me? This is pretty intense music for talking to a fucking gas station attendant. Did somebody say fill her up? Like, don't gas station attendants usually like do jaunty little song and dance numbers or something? Like, this seems oddly ominous. Did you give me the power? Are you my castle, Grayskull? Ah, uh, that's being oddly unprofessional for your station there. You've reached me at last. Me, the gas station attendant. What?
Again, having all this, like, destiny and awakening your potential stuff coming from a fucking gas station attendant, I gotta admit, I did not see this coming whenever I first played this game. You really are troublesome. Not only oh my god! The, the gas station attendant is voiced by Karen Strasman! Who else was voiced by Karen Strasman? It was Marie when she was possessed! Are you talking about Marie? <laughs> it's such a foolish thing. What good is saving her life? She is but rubbish. Suitable only for getting rid of that point. Now that's not call. nice. That's very mm. rude. <laughs> Don't tell me she was still carrying that around. Oh, excuse me. I was talking about that bamboo comb you have on you. This was a big part yes. of her social link. I know. After all, it is Super a important. separation. Which is why I gave it to her as we parted ways. Combs have the power to How cause foolish. separation. That comb was a curse. And to think she treasured it all this time. She must Amnesia will do that to you. To cling to. There's a limit to how irresponsible you can get. You messed with me as well. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do about it? Have you the seen what I've done to the last few bosses? Way. You certainly have the powers I was expecting. What you got? I took lightning to the face, lady. For your special potential, of course. Your friends were drawn to the spark I stirred in you. That's why they're here now, with their awakened powers. Still, I didn't think you'd make it all the way to me. You Indeed, work at a gas station. You're not that alone. hard to find. You're really something. I am, aren't I? What? You don't remember? When you first came to town... I think we should have noticed the gas station attendant having fucking glowing like red eyes. This. Like out of the pits of hell. Are you in high school? Like, that should have been something Narukami Does picked up on. City boy to Someone with red eyes? I'm gonna draw a bit of a line here and say... So mm, I'm sure maybe a little suspicious. Fast. You'll either be hanging out with your friends or doing part-time jobs. Or, you know, fighting horrible demons. What? Nothing. Right now. Give it some thought, why don't you? We don't mind if you're a student. You lied about the part-time job, didn't you? That's your worst crime of all. You're not the only one I welcome to town with a handshake greeting. I did the same for a few other outsiders like you. A handful of strangers were more than sufficient to stimulate a small... Okay, do you like just mean Namatami and Adachi? Because if but you mean more than just those two, that's imagine. gonna be a bit of a problem. Enough to envelop this town with fog, and later lift it. Yeah, because I'm awesome. That, you now stand before me as if your assigned part wasn't enough. What for? To reach out to the truth! What will grasping the truth do for you? Why such greed? I guess it's the foolish nature of being mortal. Um, so the fog's back. Oh my goodness, she's flying. I am Izunami. Oh my goodness. It's Izanagi's crazy ex-wife. Is merely an aspect of myself that I You got locked up in a cave. You awakened to a power I had not imagined. You defeated the two Sigiri and the one fragment born from me. Cause I'm awesome. New game plus. Suck it. Face to face with me. I can no longer ignore the situation as mere foolishness. This may be fate. Margaret, you mind coming out here and helping me with this? And Margaret just jumps out of the velvet room and just smacks her away. Bam! Game over. Because you gotta imagine, Margaret and the rest of the velvet room attendants are way stronger than Izanami. Like, that's how it worked out in Persona 3. Like, Elizabeth is, like, league stronger than the final boss in that game. Hey, 
Are you all right? Who was that you were just talking to? Did you not notice her flying? Here? She was flying, Chie. The gas station attendant was behind it all. Like out of an episode of fucking Scooby-Doo. I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids and your talking bear. In the other world? If we don't beat her, I'm sure it'll all happen again. Oh, okay. The others aren't far off, so I'll call them up. Yeah, will ya? Tell him this is really gonna close the case. Right. We'll defeat her and put an end to this for sure this time. We're going to fight a god, guys. Ready, let's meet up at I'm just saying. We're going against a god. Or goddess, I should say. Like, whatever. It wouldn't be the first time. So yeah, Marie was part of Izanami, who's a goddess. Yeah. You know, if the go you know, if Izanami really wanted to crush Narakami and his friends, why didn't she just attack him outside the TV world? Like, we can't really do anything outside the TV world. We can't use our personas. Like, if you want to, like, stop the only ones who have a pot who have, like, a shot of beating you, just attack them when they're weak. Talk to Margaret again? Hey, Margaret. Crazy shit happened out there. But hey, we get some bonuses here. Considering we just finished up Adachi's social link, Margaret has a nice little reward for us. We finish all the social links. Oh, Margaret. What would Rise think? So what do we get for getting all the social links? The mandala robe. I believe this just ups the amount of experience that you get. But let's double check. Is it better than the godly robe? Not even close. Yeah, it gives you 50% more e EXP. I mean, in the vanilla game, this would have been a fine item. But in P4G? It's pretty fucking worthless, honestly. It has garbage defense. And honestly, when you can crank up the amount of XP that you get in this game, and the sheer amount of golden hands that pop up, yeah, it's not really worth that much. I'm already at, like, max level. More or less. I really have no use for this thing. So, it... It turns out, like, the whole plot was orchestrated by a damn god. It was orchestrated by a goddess. So, I guess... <laughs> again, this seems very similar to... to uh, again, this seems very similar to JoJo Part 4. Because if you replace the word Izanami with the arrow, this makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Izanami's basically the fucking arrow. Sort of. Like, she pierces, she touches slash pierces Narakami, therefore giving him Izanagi slash crazy diamond. She touches slash pierces Adachi, therefore giving him Magatsu Izanagi otherwise known as Killer Queen. And I'm not sure who Namatame's, like, respective character in JoJo Part 4 is. We all seem pretty nonchalant about going fight a goddess, huh? So yeah, we're gonna go fight Izanagi's ex-wife. That'll be interesting. 
And this is another little interesting little detail. I might have brought this up earlier with uh, the Adachi part of the playthrough. Narukami gets his power from uh, Izanami. And so did Adachi and so did Namatame. Since Narukami is a really cool guy, he got Izanagi. He got a standard, like, non-corrupted Izanagi that seeks to bring order and justice. Uh, Adachi, being a huge corrupt asshole, gets his Izanagi transformed into Magatsu Izanagi, the Tempter of the Void. So that makes sense. So what the fuck happened to the Izanagi that Namatame got? Like, I'm so curious of what that might have looked like. Because Namatame wasn't necessarily evil. He was just really misguided, and he, and he clearly had a few issues going on. Like, what with the messiah complex and his need to save everyone, and the fact that he thought, like, the Midnight Channel was talking to him about who to save. Dude clearly had some problems. So I'm curious as to how that would have affected the Izanagi he got from Izanami. Because, I mean, it never shows up, because, I mean, when we fight him uh, for his boss fight, he just gets possessed by a bunch of shadows, and he turns into uh, Amano Sagiri. So it never pops up. Mm, maybe he just didn't realize he had the power of Persona. I don't know. I would have been super interested to see what Namatame's version of Izanagi looked like. I think it would have looked pretty interesting. I have a feeling it would have looked like really green or something. Or maybe it'd be all white. Oh well, enough about that. More or less, the whole plot was kickstarted by Izanami, who was disguised as a gas station attendant who was just... who was just fucking with everybody. Like, this was just such a weird twist for me when I originally played this game. Like, really? The gas station attendant did it? Like, this is seriously, like, right out of a fucking Scooby-Doo episode. Old man Jenkins, you were behind the Midnight Channel? I'll do my furry best! Shut up with the fucking puns, Teddy! Son of a bitch! We're going to fight a goddess! Stop with the damn puns! My god! Even at the end of the game- oh my- okay. Risei's persona looks pretty sick right now, I gotta say. Look how cool that looks! Oh, it's gone. I bet it's that lady. She's waiting for us there. That reminds me. That Amino something we beat said stuff like, We'll meet again. If that thing's gonna show up again, let's crush him completely so he can't cause any more problems from here on out. Here's a bit Damn of a spoiler. Straight. Amino Sagiri we'll never shows up again. We'll do it and give we just we just go fight Izanami. Amino Sagiri doesn't show up like again in this entire playthrough. It is it's a little weird. Like that they would just bring it up. Really is gonna be the last time we do something like this. Aw, oh, well, Chie, don't bring it down like, like this. Weird thing to say, but it was a lot of fun. You know, solving That's murders and stuff like that. Together toward a common goal. There were many things we believed in without questioning them. The culprit's identity, their motives. There were many occasions where we nearly gave up. That is it would true. Easier if we'd chosen to look the other way, but we didn't. We reached out to the truth. Every inch of our way. I want to. Because we're the seekers of truth. Seeing, touching, and thinking for myself. Yeah. Still, one person alone can only understand so much. That's why we're all here together. Right. All for one and one for all. Yeah. So long as someone's got your back, you can kick against the pricks no matter how tough they are. This is for our future. So we can see him off tomorrow with no regrets. Ew. Yosuke always has to try to make himself look all cool. But he's so pathetic, it makes my skin crawl. Uh. 
Gotta have one last giggle before the final boss fight. spilled juice on you earlier. Alright, so in the next update, we're gonna go fight Izanami and deal with Margaret. So, that'll be on the finale. However, we still have quite a bit of this video left to go, which means we're gonna be hanging out with the rest of the female social links on Valentine's Day, as well as looking at the romantic goodbyes for Narakami's last day in Inaba, and we'll also be watching the normal ending. So, we're gonna start off the Valentine's Day events with Yukiko. Now, I kind of put these in a bit of a weird order because there is supposed to be a cutscene that plays before you spend uh, Valentine's Day with Yukiko or the other female social links. Now, I showed off in the normal uh, single girl playthrough with Rise, like, Chie and Yukiko were kind of saying, like, okay, take your candy and leave. Well, in, uh, if you pursue them romantically, then they start acting a little bit more uh, affectionate. Like, uh, well, they start acting a little bit more embarrassed about presenting their candy and stuff like that. And we're going to see that cutscene later on down the line, but there's, uh, that's going to be a little bittersweet. <laughs> Get it because of the candy anyway. all these ways to present it to you, and I practiced a big speech. But everyone was there, and I had such a huge box, and it was hard. This is for you. It's kind of big, but... I wanted to make it myself, but everyone else at the end noticed what I was doing. First they just supported me, but then they all started helping out. That's probably for the best. Given, you know, given the fact of what fucking Nanako, like, made because of your advice and Chie's advice, yeah, I would imagine that, you know, you might need a pinch of help, Yukiko. <laughs> I'll make it by myself next time, with all my love poured into And hopefully she'll have learned how to, like, make chocolate. Will you open it? It's a gourmet quality chocolate. See, unlike with the uh, Rise's, you can't stop eating. Unlike with Rise's, who handmade it and put like fucking uh, jalapenos and shit like that in it, you know, the cooks, sure cooks actually good. helped out with this one, so you actually get some decent chocolate. They stopped me, but I should have gone with my gut and used the. Yeah, see, that's what would have happened next time. Then, <laughs> don't shoot her down on Valentine's Day. Add a layer of complexity to the flavor. They are the same color. No, they are not. They are not, Yukiko. So I'll try making. I don't think anyone wants to eat like straight up black squid ink chocolate. Gross. I'm so glad I could get. Oh, why you gotta ruin the the romance like that, Yukiko? I've been thinking about this day for so long. I didn't know if we'd be able to spend the day together, but at the very least, I wanted to give you know you how, like, in Persona 3, they mentioned, like, where the P1 and P2 cast have gone, and, like, Tatsuya is now a cop or something like that, or Eikichi is a fucking glam metal rock band who, like, makes sushi. I would like, as, like, kind of an ironic twist, if in P5 they say, like, uh, right the head of the Amagi Inn is like a gourmet chef who makes the most delicious meals. I'll be the you know, shit like that. Next to, me. to show that they've kind of like come together. further as we'll characters. Say, Welcome together. And that's how it'll be. What? <laughs> that sounds. Yeah, welcome! <laughs> That might be how they do it at Juness, but that's no way to greet people at an inn. You have to bow gracefully. <sighs> no fair. She still has that come hither stare. You shouting that out of my head. Whenever I hear someone say that, I'm going to remember you. Aww. It'll be as if we're saying it together. That's sweet. Great. Now I'm starting to sweat. Well, you, you are wearing a pretty heavy jacket there, Yukiko. It should be really cold right now. But I don't feel any of that. Well, she is the fire mage. I keep bringing that up so many times in this Let's Play that she's the fire mage. Do you get it yet? Because cause she's like red. My love but her name means snow. It's so warm. Whatever. I feel like I'm going to melt. I'm scared that I'm going to disappear. I love you. 
I love you so much with all that I am. So that's Yukiko's uh, Valentine's Day event. It's pretty sweet. It's very nice. Anyway, let's move on to Chie, shall we? With certain events like this, like with the shrine, in order to get one Valentine's Day event, you have to turn down another one. So, Yukiko wants to have that romantic uh, time by the beach, but we're gonna go ahead and turn her down in favor of Chie. And we're gonna keep going down the line as we show off the other female social links. And I make a, I make a pretty big cut right here where, uh, where we just skip to the beach. There's a very good reason for that. There is a very good reason for that, as you will see a little later on. Anyway, here's Chie. Yeah, even though it's the dead of winter, it still refuses to wear pants. I just wanted to hand you the chocolate, but I panicked. Though, <laughs> I've been panicking ever since yesterday. Well, this is it. Wrapped adorably. I couldn't make up my mind at first, so I decided to make it from scratch. That makes it more personal. I don't know how it tastes, but it's chocolate, I think. Oh boy, that's, that, yeah, the I think makes you nervous. Cram it in your mouth with gusto. Go whole hog. Getting anxious. Screw it. But it's good, I think. It's misshapen. It's also slightly runny. And calf spears I'm putting in your mouth. Oh my goodness. It's not delicious. Oh. Well, is it halfway it decent? It, it doesn't have to be like so delicious. But I mean, like, I, I, I don't know. But no matter how much water I put in, it just wouldn't mix. I, I, I'm not sure on like how to make chocolate, but do you well, really need to put water or? Much? I don't know. Uh, that, that's not really like me, is it? I was expecting it to be in the shape of a foot or something like that, or like a dragon. Make a dragon-shaped oh. chocolate. <sighs> that's good. And the little uh, card in front of it should have like Bruce Lee going like, "What I still can't believe it. You actually chose me. Aww. I'm so ordinary compared to Yukiko or Risei-chan or Naoto-kun. Yet you picked me. Oh, if this is a dream, I better not wake up. <laughs> I'm stupid. I feel like I'm always frantic. Maybe I've lost before I've begun. You know, Taka and Zito from T girl, Team Four Star give uh, Chie a lot of shit. After I, I like her. You know, I think Chie's a pretty good character. Yeah, she's got some faults here and there, but then again, everybody does. Granted, I like Naoto and Risei more, this but close to you? I still like Chie. Your heart she's not beating. worse girl. No. Honestly, I don't think any girls in this game are worse girls. That's just me. I don't. I don't play bias. I don't like. I have my preferences for like as far as waifus are concerned, but I don't immediately put down anyone for their preferences. Unless it's Marie. <laughs> uh, I kid. I kid. But I say that. But after a while, Chie does kind of devolve into a worse interpretation of her character. Up next is Naoto, By the way. Every dream falling apart. Tell me why you did it after the promise. Yeah, in P4 Arena or PQ, yeah, Chie does take a significant dip in character. Like, to the point where all she talks about is meat or just kung fu. And she has none of the, like, depth that her character here has. So anyway, we're going to be hanging out with Naoto in this particular uh, event. Which means we got to turn down... Yukiko, Chie, and Risei. And again, 
There's a very good reason why I'm leaving this portion here. There is a damn good reason why I'm leaving these declining texts here and why I'm cutting immediately to the beach scene. Because trust me, I skipped a pretty big cutscene for all these parts. Oh, Naoto, you gotta work on your texting. Seriously. It's like, are you a robot? Like, Naoto like, texts like a fucking machine or whatever. I mean, I get that's part of her character, but still. So hey, Nato actually reads a cookbook, so her candy is probably decent. It's quiet. Um, sorry about what happened back at the school. I didn't have to say it like that in front of everyone, but I was just so nervous about today. Mmm. Uh, anyway, here. A simple looking box. I, at first, I had it all wrapped up in some cute little package, but I took it off because it was too embarrassing carrying that around. Oh, sounds like you. Oh, but maybe I should have kept it the way it was. Still, I made it with you in mind. Please accept it. And, um, well, if you could... Oh, of course. That's an adorable design, etched in in painstaking detail. It tastes as elegant as it looks. Of course it does, because it was from Nauto. I guess I did an okay job. I mean, what did I expect? I made it exactly the way the book said to. Like I you should. To make Don't improvise. I really felt, but I couldn't think of anything. Candy always tastes better when you share it with a friend. When I'm with you, I start to lose sight of the identity I've created for myself. I'm blurring, becoming something new. I want to be happy with who I am, but I want you to be happy with who I am too. And then, I start wondering if I'm changing myself for my benefit, or if I'm doing it for your approval, and what that means about me. I think I want you to help me figure out who I really want to be. Because I know that if you're happy with who I am, then I don't need anyone else's approval but my own. Hey, there you go, Nato. But you're fine just the way you are. So, you're saying that you like who I am now? I don't need to change myself for you? Naoto is a really cool character. I'm so immature. I hate it. I like her. This is the first time I've been in love. So matters of the heart are still... difficult for me. I still want Naoto to show up in P5 and just, like, completely wipe the P5 cast. Just, like, sweep them. But... You She'd be awesome in P5. You're a master detective. Or a spy. It's not fair. Stealing just my heart. Ah, I see? To take part see? That's a huge reference to P5. <laughs> because she's a detective and we're stealing her heart and... <laughs> oh, this is good. Anyway, let's move on to I, the non-party member characters. Still I can, still I can, oh baby, I Seriously, like they could not have dropped like the P5 reference harder. I know P5 wasn't being made yet, but come on. She was, she's a detective saying shit like steal your heart and shit like that. Oh, it's so good. I'm looking forward to that game. Oh, man. That's going to be a fun one to LP. It's little details like this, little details that I like. Again, you, you gotta reject everybody else. You 
You got to linger on these, by the way. You got to linger on them. So we're hanging out with I. So we're hanging out with I at the beach today, and she doesn't have any unique winter wear. I don't think we've ever actually heard uh, I speak in a fully voiced cutscene. Yeah, it's so cold. Not that much. Not that here. often, actually. It's just us. Well, I guess that's a good thing. So, how'd you make out? Did you get a lot of chocolate today? You know it, baby. I got friendship chocolates. <laughs> I didn't get the one I wanted yet. I know the last one's the uh, romantic option, but whatever. Screw Just it. Friendship chocolate. Yeah, oh, baby. Chocolate You're the only one for me. Would piss me off, but you getting nothing but friendship chocolate's a downer. <laughs> Here you go. A luxurious wrapping. Well, of this course, she comes from money. Sells the world's most delicious chocolate. I got it just for this occasion. Oh, that's sweet. What? You wanted homemade candy? <laughs> like I'd waste time doing that. See, you know she's not a party member because she didn't put in the effort. I made it myself, and I wanted to make sure you got something really good. Oh, but yeah, she, it comes from a good place. Hey, at the very least, you're getting it from smells of foreign and exotic spices. Ooh, fancy. See, you, like, I guess it's kind of... See, at least you know you're getting something halfway decent, because you're not dealing with Mystery Food X type chocolate. I love this chocolate so much. And she likes it, so she's sharing something she likes with you. would bring it home It's nice. All the time. When I was bullied for being fat, I blamed it on the chocolate. I blamed my dad for bringing it to me. But I was always blaming someone or something else for the problems in my life. Dad, he wouldn't get angry though. He just started bringing me other stuff instead of chocolate. My dad is so kind. He should have scolded me, kicked me out, but he loves me so much. So this year, I got my dad some of this chocolate too, since I love him and the chocolate, and you too. Aww. Don't say it like that. Tell me you love me. The social link has had some freaking ups and downs, but I'm I'm very glad that it's come out on a on a pretty decent high point. Good, I forgive you. <laughs> All alone in the winter sea, it's like a love song. Hmm, not bad. When I'm with you, the world is... It's not bad. In fact, it's good. I don't think there's anyone else for me. And there's no one else for you but me, so... Don't you let me go. Don't ever let me go. That was sweet. Alright, up next is Yumi. And as per usual, now we gotta reject everyone down the line. Everybody. Everybody except Yumi. After Yumi's uh, Valentine's Day event, you're gonna understand why I left this part in. And you're gonna understand just the weight of, re of uh, declining. I might be giving away a little bit too much, but hey, whatever. Game's been out for a few years, I, I can kind of fudge it a little bit here and there.
And again, just like with I, Yumi does not have any unique winter wear. I used to come here alone a long time ago. I'd practice my lines out here. The night sea would be dark and swirling, and I would think it's just like me. Typical theater student. It's just like me now. It's clean and shining. That's how I feel, too. When I'm with you, I feel like I can start thinking of myself as a decent person. Oh, yeah. The whole point of wanting to see you today. It's homemade. I probably could have bought something that tastes better. But I now, that the we don't know if Yumi is a decent cook in this game, but I'm going to go ahead and assume since we haven't had any on-screen, like, poisoning, she's fine. Let's go ahead and assume that Yumi is fine. Thank you. Actually, I was hoping you'd say that. It's a bit unfair of me to expect you to, isn't it? Well, will you eat it then? Wasn't that good for a first attempt? I found out that I could apply some of my other cooking techniques to it. See, she has Do cooking you techniques. Of course. Oh, but you gotta go for the last one. You manipulator. Now I'll have to make you stuff. Ah, smooth talker you Narakami. Have, you, know. you have to say it's good, even if it's not. I think it's the she did it on her first oh, attempt, sure. which Sometimes compared to like warmer and warmer. Chi and Yukiko's first attempt at cooking curry. You're not going to be here My God! Bloom again. I wanted to see the flowers with you. I you gotta to bring it down, don't you, Yumi? And to amusement parks or go on an adventure to some place far away. There are hey, so many things I'm I know how we can have an adventure. Draw just follow me to Juness, the TV department, best I can <laughs> and just do. throw her in. It's super fun in there, Yumi. Please, tell me my time. There's a talking bear friends, in there. Or else, I'll be so worried. Yeah, I guess all I can do is believe in you. I don't want to be apart from you. I don't want this to be over. I love you, too. There's so much I worry about for the future, but I know that the way I feel about you now is solid. I'll always be in love with you, and that won't ever change. Well, that was Yumi's Valentine's Day event, but we have one more to go, and it's a doozy. Heartbreak, heartbreak, you tell me. Yeah. Yeah, does that give you a bit of a hint? Interesting song choice I picked, huh? Uh. So what happens if dear Narakami decides to reject everybody? Like, declines every single Valentine's Day event. What would happen then? Let's find out. So no Yukiko, no Chie, no Rise, no Naoto, no Yumi, and no I. Yeah, you, you just gotta sit on those, uh, you just gotta sit on those declined, don't you? Yeah, you just gotta deal with the whole declining of Valentine's Day event. And that was all of them. 
you decide to not make any plans for today. I'm sure this will have zero negative consequences. Absolutely zero. Yo! So we're gonna let this we're gonna let this play out similarly to uh, how we did at, toward the beginning of the video with Rise. But there's a little something extra. Now remember, this is the harem path, by the way. This is kind of the whole reason why I did two separate playthroughs. Why I did a Rise only path and a harem path. Mainly, it was all just for this video. Well, and also a few of the other options that you see, like, and a few of the other differences in cutscenes that you see whenever you go for a more romantic path. But this is the huge payoff. Now the female uh, social links said something along the lines of, Oh, I'm sorry I acted this way. I was just a little embarrassed about giving you your chocolate in front of everybody. And they're going to be referencing this particular scene that we're about to watch. Now, I kind of cut this out before I showed off each of the uh, Valentine's Day events, but I feel like I did it for a decent reason. I'm going to hang out here for a bit longer, but... But there is going to be some significant differences for this cutscene since we're going on a harem path. I'll go up to the roof or something. I'm going to be behind school building. You know, just because. Most of the girls are already gone. Hey, man, all these guys are obsessed with chocolate. They want candy so much, why don't they just buy some themselves? Are you serious? Oh, sweet, lovable kanji. For yourself. Yeah? Man, you're clueless. Whatever. I know I'm getting some for sure today. Stop fooling yourself. That just... Yeah, that just seems like such a dick thing to say. That pathetic. Come on, man. I can get quite a lot. From part-time... I like to think whenever he said, Come on, man, stop fooling. Narakami just sheds a single tear, going like, Why don't you accept my love, Yosuke? Right, Chie-san? Yukiko-san? Uh... I see you've got some big bags with you today. Wow, that's not the sound of desperation or anything. Yeah, I do have some. Uh, Yukiko, why don't you hand yours out first? N no, you first, Chie. I, I can't. Not here. See? There's the difference. There's the little, the little, uh, change. If you're going for a harem path. You know and now Chie kind of knows what's up. Chie, take the hint. We're both out of the picture now. Yeah, you are. But then again, so am I. Chocolate? Great timing. Here you go, Chie-senpai. For always being so hardworking. Why me? Because today's for giving out chocolate to the people you like, right? It's a great day to say thank you to all those people in your life, not just your romantic partner. Wow, putting a new spin on things. She's so thoughtful. Must be all those years in showbiz. Hey, what about him? I'll give him his chocolate later. I've got some stuff to take care of right now, but I'll call you soon. Does that mean? Uh oh. Uh, she ain't. She ain't. You can go. No. Super curious about who I'm going to hand my special chocolate to. If I do it now, it'll be embarrassing. So see you later. Well, I have some other people to give uh, chocolate to. She is getting worried. 
Kanto-kun. What's up? Oh, well... And Naoto actually hangs around a little bit longer. Not the kind of person who gives chocolate to just anybody? Sorry, that was a little mean. But I'm serious too, and I'm not gonna lose. Senpai? <clears throat> Senpai, I have to talk to you later, so I'll see you then. See, this is the thing Naoto was talking about earlier. What was all that? Yeah. Oh well, Kanji. Guess we're spending time with each other today. So, gets a little awkward, doesn't it? <laughs> now that all the girls are literally going for Narakami. everyone. I have chocolates here with everyone's names on them. Please take your candy and go home. Okay. All aboard the Narakami Express. Come see me later. That's it. Dismissed. Any questions? Come on. What are you doing? You've got to make a decision right now. Do I have to? Uh, uh, <laughs> me, me too. I I've got candy for everybody but you, so... Uh... See you later. What the hell, man? What kind of crazy voodoo are you doing to be such a chick magnet? Uh -huh. How can one guy be so popular with the ladies? Because he's Narakami. Senpai's popular? Whoa, that's impressive. You're the only one I have my eyes on, Kanji. How clueless you are. <laughs> oh. This was a funny cutscene. It's about to get very, very, very awkward very quickly. So remember declining every single girl's invitation for Valentine's Day? Well, here's the payoff. For being such a spaz just now in front of everybody. It's playing the sad music. This is yours. It's a, a little different from everyone else's. You, um, do, do you have something else to do today? I'm not doing anything, so, uh, maybe I'll go with you. Feel bad about what you did. Okay, time for a little explanation time. In Persona 4 Vanilla, you could pretty much do a harem path, no problem. You could date every single girl, then there might be a hint of like someone getting suspicious of, about you dating someone else. But for the most part, it was never like acted upon. Everything was fine. You could go on a harem path, no consequences. Now, apparently the good people at Atlas figured, you know what? That's a fucking dick move to do. So we're gonna make you feel like a fucking asshole. And good on them, by the way. This is a dirtbag move that I pulled off right here. It's very dirtbaggish. So. Inst that's why they added the Valentine's Day event for P4G, because it'll take you by surprise. Everybody who who came off vanilla thinking, oh, I'm just gonna date all the girls. Why pick just one? I can have them all. This motherfucker, this is why. <laughs> because when you go for a harem path, this is what you get paid with. And remember whenever I was cutting from like answering the text to going directly to the this beach date? That's because I was skipping past this with every single female party member. Yeah, for some reason, I and Yumi, they don't have scenes like this. It's just the female party members. Just the two of us. But you got, but I had to sit through all of these each and every time. And it does not get any fucking easier. It is just a fucking kick to the dick. And you know what? It should be. Because you decided to go for the harem path. Because you're a fucking cockbag. That's why. You deserve this pain for going for a harem path. I... I am your girlfriend, right? Yeah. Do you feel bad yet? You should. You fucking should. I just get worried sometimes. It's not great. It's not great. And keep in mind, it's not just... 
This doesn't just happen whenever you decline all their invitations. This happens when you choose one girl. The other girls immediately start, like, asking these questions, and it makes you feel like an asshole. Because these are not only your friends, these are your significant others, if you've gone for a harem path. And it makes you feel like a shitbird. Just the biggest bag of shit. And they don't stop. The hits keep on coming. Like, in Persona 3, they shut this down right quick. Right fucking quick. For a moment, like, I was thinking that you can only pick one gone. girl. If you pick another one, you fucked up that- you fucked up both social links. Sorry. Here. Should've picked this one. But then again, with Persona 3, it's super easy because the only correct answer is Mitsuru. Obviously. Well, now where are you going? Who are you going to see? It's a girl, isn't it? Oh, God. It's just better to stay silent. It's so much better to stay silent. It doesn't help, but it's better than just saying any fucking thing. Because no matter what you say, you're basically putting your foot in your mouth. Because fuck you. I even go on a date with you on Valentine's Day. I guess that if whatever it is is a big deal to you, I can't complain. But I'm not just going to take it lying down. This isn't fun and games. I'm serious about you. See? All the female, all the female party members have a bit of an issue with you cheating on them. I don't want to trouble you. Or just not going with them. They have a bit of an issue with that. Uh, I'm curious of how they'll handle in P5. But back to P3, yeah, the only correct answer for the guy path is Mitsuru. And honestly, if you go for the girl path, I honestly would probably go with Shinji. But hey, Akihiko makes a good strong point. Just saying. It's one of those two. Because any other option is incorrect. You want to date Ken? Okay. Fine, be creepy. I sincerely wonder how- I, I'm curious of how P5 is going to handle this. It's, I'm sorry. Especially considering, like, you are literally stealing their myself. hearts. You're going to see someone else today, aren't you? Oh, God. And you can't say anything here. And you can't just go ellipses here. That's not a good answer. Yeah. Never mind. I don't want to know the real answer. Oh. Well, this is a first. There is a mystery. And I know the answer. Yet, I want to look away from it. Oh, fuck. This is just bad. Situation, this is so bad. To stop it. it tells me you'll only get hurt. Do you feel yeah, bad yet? You should. You fucking hurts. should. <laughs> I'm a failure. And the fucked so up thing is, in this scenario, truth. Narukami is not seeing a single person. He just said no to all of them and just said, fuck it, I'm gonna spend Valentine's Day alone. That's the fucked up thing. So yeah, there is no I and Yumi cutscene. For some reason, they just don't give a fuck. So, you go to Juness with Yosuke and the rest of the guys. This is your Valentine's Day, fucker. Yosuke, why do you look so hopeful? Hopeful? What are you talking about? You had all the girls in your hands and then you just threw them away. Excuse me. Ooh, lovely woman. Yes! Where's a trash can? The, uh, the trash can. You know, where you live, Yosuke. <laughs> it's your second home. Give it up, Yosuke. It's over. You're only gonna get yourself hurt. You'll see. Oh. Shut up! Don't you, you'll see me! You don't understand the true strength of a man's heart. I know I don't have anything waiting for me, but I can't give up my hope. It's my only weapon against the Valentine's monster. The fuck is that? Pathetic. The fuck is a Valentine's hey, monster? So rude. I know you got chocolate from Shie Chan and some other girls. That was friend chocolate. That. And it was 100% friend zone chocolate. And you ate it all anyway. Oh, it that's was dick. So good. Oh, you fucking scumbag, Teddy. Chocolate from Juness. I put the sales stickers on them myself. I know. Hey, since you ate all my chocolate, when White Day rolls around, it's your responsibility to make it up to me. Oh, don't you worry. All the ladies will get Teddy's love. 
Teddy, that's creepy. Stop oh, being creepy. Like that, Yukiko will sew your mouth shut. And at least it'll oh, stop the fucking bear mind. puns. I'll give them my winning topsicle sticks. They're a Teddy family bear loom. God. Oh God. Ugh. Don't give girls something that you've licked all over. Ew. Anyway, what are you doing here? Don't you have a bunch of dates, huh? This sounded more fun. The second option is to such a dick move. Or to be angry that you're not as desperate as us. That is the question. Hey, Yosuke! Your younger brother, Kanji-kun, is acting weirder than normal. What? Why are you calling him my brother all of a sudden? Yeah, why is that? He's brothers in nobody's arms. Family that's lonely together is bronely together. Teddy. Shut up! Don't call us that! Don't even For mention For fuck's daddy. sake, Teddy. Shut up! Anyway, you have been quiet this whole time. What's going on with you, man? Are you disappointed that Naoto... Oh. No, I wasn't expecting anything from her, and I don't think of her like that anyway. Oh, that's just a kick yeah, in the dick, Kanji. Well, I'm sorry. Well, uh... Oh, so, wait. Okay, the blushy is... blushes. Wait a minute. What could this be? Oh! Oh! A piece of chocolate that looks like Teddy in excruciating detail! The one true path! Wow. So now it's time for guys to give chocolate to each other? That's not the person you're supposed to give that to. Wait, unless... Kanji, I accept you with open arms. No, it's not like that. I... Bullshit, it's not. I, I love you, Kanji. And I've never been able to pay him back. Oh, damn. It's Fuck it. All the heartbreak, this is worth it. So I thought I'd do this. To fucking go down the romance path with Kanji. Yeah. Oh, man. It's heavy with gratitude and chocolate. Yeah, that's right. This is a present from Kanji and me. It mean a lot. Oh, to don't you team. fucking steal this, Yosuke! Hey, what now? <laughs> you found me out. It's a present from me to you. You Surprise! fucking dirtbags! It's a cuddly, waddly choco teddy hug pillow. Hold on to it on those lonely nights for sweet, ridiculous dreams. You two are dirtbags. Hey, don't jump on my bandwagon. Besides, if you hold on to it, it's gonna melt. Wait, you have non-chocolate teddy hug pillows? Oh God, Kanji. Kanji, just- I want one! <laughs> Fucking Kanji. You know what? Fuck it. Turn down all the girls, worth it. Worth it. This cutscene was priceless. Uh, Kanji, just fucking make a hug pillow shaped like Teddy. You want one so damn bad, you can make it. So hey, for some reason, even though you, you know, went for other girls, you but you're still romantic with Marie, this cutscene plays out somewhat similarly. I don't get it. What, do you know why I'm here? <laughs> you really she are- She doesn't seem to mind as much that you're dating other girls, because, you know, she's cool with it. And none of the other girls seem to mind if you're dating Marie. You can have I guess because Marie can potentially disappear and may also be magical that they don't really give a fuck. I don't know. That room doesn't anyway, this cutscene more or less plays out the same with just a few little changes in dialogue. Any good. Sorry. Huh? It's okay. That it's thing fine. is fucking ticking. Hmm. What do you mean incredible? It's ticking. You can eat it. If you don't hurry, it'll melt. If it melts, it'll run away. Like, what the fuck? Is this thing like some sort of eldritch abomination? What fucking personas from the compendium did you throw into this thing? I want you to tell me whether it was good or not. Now. How many... What skill cards did you throw into this thing? Does it know primal force? Am I gonna die if I eat this thing? You eat it and it casts like Megidolo in inside your guts and fucking makes Narakami explode. That's the end of the game. That's the that's the punishment for your sins. You ate it all? That's incredible. Are you stupid? Well, it, it makes my work worth it. It is moving in your stomach. That is still 
quite unnerving. Day isn't an actual ritual, huh? I looked it up. I thought it was some big event, you know, a turning point of your life. I'm so lame. I was fooled. I feel stupid. Ugh. But it's not like that. I I didn't make that chocolate just because I thought it was something I was supposed to. No, that that makes it sound like I'm serious. Uh, well, I am serious, but. You can just shut I'm so disappointed that there's no Margaret Valentine's Day event. That's the one I want. If not Kanji, I want to date Margaret. Come on. Look, just close your eyes. One of the two. I either want I either want Kanji or I want Margaret. Those are the true paths. Or both. Whatever. I don't really get it. Margaret might be into it. It looks like I don't just like you. I want to be with you forever and ever. Yeah, there you go. I love you. I love you so There's much. There's the change in dialogue. And then you get poisoned by Nanako. Anyway, let's move on to the romantic goodbyes, shall we? Something different for uh, The Last Day in Inaba. So yeah, none of these are voiced, but honestly, I think it's a nice little touch here and there. It's a nice little change in dialogue. It acknowledges that you've established a social link with them. And honestly, even if you rejected all the female social links, they're still slightly okay with you. They don't think you're a huge piece of shit. <laughs> they're not saying like, oh, you, where's your whore or something like that. Like, <laughs> none of them call you out for being a huge scumbag. It, like, on Valentine's Day. Granted, a few months have passed, but still. Like, I don't know. I guess you made it up to them in the... in the previous months. Go figure. Honestly, this video, honestly, this portion of the video will only focus on the characters you can establish a romantic social link with. So I'll be skipping the ones that don't have any romantic options. For the most part, the dialogue is unchanged, but there are a few little minor changes here and there. Again, they're very minor changes, but hey, it's still a nice little detail here and there. So, even if you were a huge scumbag and you went for the harem path or you rejected all the girls or whatever, hey, they're still, you know, they're still okay with you. It's water under the bridge, even though you broke their heart on Valentine's Day. Like a fucking dick. Oh. I like that little touch. I brought this up, I, I, I know I already brought this up, but I like that little touch, you know? It's more or less Atlas calling you out for being a shit. I showed off the harem path so you don't have to go down that path. Pick one girl, pick one waifu, don't try to get all the waifus. If you have more than one waifu, it'll, it, it'll uh, destroy your laifu. Oh my goodness. So again, I'm very curious of how Persona 5 is going to handle this. I'm very curious. And when I let's play that game, I'm going to try doing something similar along the lines of my P4G playthrough. Like, it's going to be a New Game Plus playthrough, so I'll have all the maxed out social link stats. Uh, it'll be an R scene uh, only, for the most part, let's play, until I use some DLC Personas to show those off. But as far as the romance path goes, I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna go for Makoto. Because I like Makoto a lot. Makoto's cool. I think Makoto is is pretty awesome. But I will show off a harem path. Like I did with this, so. Two playthroughs for the price of one. You'll be able to see all the romantic options with uh, each of the characters. 
and more than likely you'll see the comeuppance of the character if he goes down a harem path. But yeah, I know this video is quite, it's quite long. And I honestly, it's, honestly, the majority of it was the Valentine's Day and the romantic stuff. But then again, I've been building up to that for like the entire playthrough, showing off all the other romantic options or changes in dialogue here and there. But uh, in the next video, it's going to be significantly shorter than this. Like this was the huge payoff and after this, the playthroughs converge into one point to where the only thing is left to do is fight Margaret, the super boss, and go through that a little bit, and also fight Izanami and get the true ending. So, the uh, finale will be quite a bit shorter than this. So, that'll be pretty cool. very happy. So yeah, for, for some reason, like, none of the girls call you out for being a shit on Valentine's Day. Like, they're, they still love you. They're, they're still... Not only are they still your friend, but they still have romantic feelings for you, <laughs> more or less. Like, because of this. Like, you... Like, honestly, what would have really made it for me, uh, for the harem path ending? Like, after you say, uh... Like, every time you reject a girl and they say how you're basically breaking their heart, their social link just fucking breaks. <laughs> it just breaks, and their persona goes down a level or whatever. I don't know. Oh, man. Thank you. So I know this video is going up a little bit after Valentine's Day, but hey, how was everybody's Valentine's Day? Mine went pretty well. I got some nice chocolate, you know, I got uh, I got some cookies here and there. Some really nice sweet stuff. I enjoy it. I'll see you later. But then again, I have a bit of a sweet tooth. I like candy and stuff like that.
So yeah, for some reason, I have no idea why, but I and Yumi, neither of them have any problems with... They don't address the fact that you were being a shit whenever you declined their invitation for Valentine's Day. They just kind of fucked off. I mean, I, I, like, I, mean, I, I don't know, I guess they just figured, okay, well, I and Yumi aren't really party members. And I guess the same goes for Ay And I guess the same goes for Ayane. And I guess they figured, you know, like, nobody really cares for I, Yumi, or Ayane. Like, compared to the main female party members? Yeah, nobody really cares about these three, in comparison. You know? You haven't spent an entire game trying to save the world with these characters. Sure, you've hung out with them and worked on their social links, but hey, you, you haven't really, like... You haven't really fought demons with them, I guess is the thing. So... I don't know. Maybe they thought those cutscenes were negligible, so they didn't have to add them? I don't know. Yeah, I'm still, I I'm still kind of hung up on that whole, like, what if I was a party member? You know, because there were some earlier concepts uh, for Risei's character design, where she looked a bit like Saki Konishi, or honestly, I thought she looked a lot more like I here, and her initial weapon was supposed to be like chains, or like a ball and chain, or something like that. And she was supposed to look more like a, like, I don't know, a punk girl or whatever, as, as compared to like an idol. Like, you know the ones I'm talking about. Like, the ones you typically see in animes and stuff like that. I don't know. But, I thought that would have been kind of an interesting little detail if they threw that into Persona 4 Arena. Like, in Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, Risei is a playable character, but her main weapon is like a mic stand. And I thought it would have been really awesome if she used like chains, like her original character design. I don't know. To me, chains by themselves seem like a pretty cool weapon. Like, it's not something that you see that often. Usually whenever you see chains, they're connected to something. Like, it's either Roadhog's hook, or Kratos's like, Blades of Chaos, or whatever. I don't know. You never really see chains by themselves. Or, I should say, you never really see chains being used as a weapon that often by themselves. If you do see chains, they're usually part of like a spell or there's some like aftershock of an attack. You know? Like you cast a spell and chains just like magically encompass, like magically ensnare an opponent. I don't know. Like, I mean, I guess chains are occasionally used for like biker style characters. I don't know. And nobody in P5 is using chains. I know that much. Although I am pretty stoked about the weapons that the characters are using in P5. Like, the main character is not using a sword for once, they're using a knife. So, and a handgun, so that's kind of cool. Uh, freaking Ryuji's using a pipe and a shotgun. Interesting. Uh, Anne is using a whip and a machine gun. Uh, Makoto is using her bare knuckles, or using like little knuckle dusters. And uh, a revolver, so big ups for that. Uh, Yusuke, who I got big hopes for, is using Iato style is using an, a katana in Iato style, like Virgil, and a fucking hunting rifle. <laughs> oh, that's that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. And then Haru uh, uses like a halberd and a grenade launcher. And I'm not entirely sure what Goro uses. They haven't really touched on Goro that much. All I know about Goro is that he's a detective and he's voiced by Robbie Draymond. So, that's cool. And supposedly, like, he's the second coming of the Detective Prince. So he's supposed to step up to Naoto. Alright, sure. 
Big shoes to fill, by the way. Big fucking shoes to fill. So, we still need to go talk to some more female social links and do more of these romantic goodbyes. Like with Naoto. Seriously. Like, I, I know it's been a few months since Valentine's Day, but it still feels like they should be a little miffed at the idea that Narukami is dating multiple girls at the same time. But if you want to see a funny interpretation of this, Falero or Falero or the guy who does Danganronpa abridged, he did a video on on the Persona 4 Golden anime that touches on this exact subject, and I gotta say it's pretty fucking funny. I I'd, I'd recommend it. Oh, uh, like I mean, at the very least, like with this, we're not dealing with school days shit. Which is a, which would be appropriate because they're in fucking school. <laughs> like you're not, like you're not seeing Yukiko take off Narakami's head and put it on a fucking and like hold it on a fucking boat or something. Oh god, like can you imagine who the fucking Yandere in Persona Four would be? Like, you'd think it'd be Risei. You know, because she acts so, uh, like, chipper all the time, and she's all happy and totally is, like, the one who's the most, like, who shows off her affections for Narakami the most. You'd think she'd be the Yandere option, huh? No, my bet is on Yukiko. I bet she is hard Yandere. I don't know. What are your opinions? Please, tell me. Oh, God. That would jack up this game's age rating. So much fucking higher. <laughs> oh shit, Senpai's dead. I guess the case wasn't solved after all. But wait, he's not. he wasn't on TV, and he's not hanging off a telephone pole. And Yukiko's just like, yes he was, you just didn't see it. <laughs> Shut up, Yosuke. <laughs> oh god. No, no, honestly, they'd probably pull a Witcher 3 thing on him and all gang up on him at the same time and tear him apart. Anyway, time for the normal ending. So, this is the best ending we've gotten so far. Now, we of course know that Izanami is still a thing, but hey, if you just say, fuck it, let's just go home, this is your ending now. You decide not to Yo. chase after the truth of the Midnight Channel. And you never catch yeah, Izanami. But hey, Adachi's been it caught as the real murderer, and yet. and uh, Amano Sagiri is no longer a problem. So, hey, one. that's okay. <laughs> and Risei is not having a good time. Hey, quit crying. It's way too soon for that. But, but... <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Sheesh. Uh, that stuff's kind of contagious, you know? God, Kanji, don't break my heart. 
Oh. It will be all right. We can see him again at any time, should we choose. Naoto's handling this pretty well. Coming up soon in May, so you better come back to visit. Oh, he will. We've already reserved rooms at our inn. Let's have another sleepover. It's not like he's gonna be gone for long. Fuck's sake, Teddy. Is it me or is that guy getting more and more aggressive lately? It's kind of getting creepy and being a bit of a problem. Especially considering there's a cop right there. I don't want you to go away. Aww. Aww, Nanako. Didn't you promise that you wouldn't cry? Well, give the kid a break, Dojima. She slaps him on the ass, just like in the beginning. After all, he's made a full confession to his crimes. There haven't been any more incidents since then. Inaba's finally back to its normal, peaceful self. But we still didn't find the truth. And Nanako's better now, too. I couldn't ask for anything more. But hey, this ending's significantly better than the other ones that we saw earlier. You're just as much a part of this family as Nanako. I'm really glad you came to stay with us. And Teddy didn't go to the TV world this time. Back anytime you want. I'll be at Juness too. I'm gonna keep working there and living at Yosuke's place. At this rate, you'll be a full-time employee. Reigning over the store as Juness's idol. Pretty cool, eh, baby? Hell no. Juness doesn't need an idol. <laughs> he still has the bishy sparkles. I am a little worried about the other world. See, there it is. That world still exists, even now. There is no longer anyone deliberately using it for evil, but we have no assurance that it won't happen again. Yeah, that's the problem. That this it shit might happen again. Expect your full but hey, if that's the case, we can just... Now our comic can come back and fix everything that. again. But hey, this time around, we don't know that Izanami is behind things. So that's that's kind of a problem, that the evil gas station attendant is still fucking with things. But hey, look, all of our social link friends are here too. We can eat At least the ones from school. Me and Daisuke will definitely come crash at your place someday. If anything happens, you can always come back here. I'll be waiting for you. Thanks for everything. Please take care. It's a nice little touch. As soon as I can look out for myself. It's a nice little touch you. that kind of acknowledges your achievements in uh, working on all the social links. But now it's time for anime. Well, see ya. Good luck over there, too. If anything happens on your end, we'll come running. Until we meet again, Senpai. Senpai? I'll be waiting for you. See ya. Take care. I'll be looking forward to seeing you again. Well, be careful. I'll see you, big bro. Bye-bye. <laughs> so see? Significantly better than the previous endings. Significantly better. And this time they're chasing after the train! You know, like friends would. Because they, they really love you. And everybody's crying, and this is ending is really fucking emotional. Yeah, power of friendship. Damn it, this ending is touching. I know it's cliche as fuck, but hey, it's a good cliche. I like these kinds of endings, even though this is not the true ending, not yet. But we're going to see the true ending on the next update. So, yeah. We get to listen to some pretty uh, upbeat music now. So, yeah. That's the normal ending for P4G. And hey, it shows off nice little details like all the character portraits and their persona portraits as well. And it also shows off some nice little animated cutscenes to kind of remember uh, what the characters did in the game. See? Yosuke and Jiraiya. We haven't seen Jiraiya in like fucking forever. Now he's Takehaya Suzano. 
so long since we had Jiraiya in the party. But yeah, see, it shows off little anime cutscenes from the game. So that's a nice little detail. It's pretty cool. And it's playing the upbeat music, you know? It's not playing the really depressing, you fucked up music. So yeah, this was by and large the longest video in the series and the longest video on the channel. But yeah, we dealt with the remaining loose ends, like with the Valentine's Day and a few extra differences and dialogue here and there. But now all we have to do left is fight the super boss and beat the true final boss and get the true ending. And that'll be it. That'll be the finale up next. As well as a little extra video. just. Some of the extra little bits of stuff that I didn't show off during the uh, playthrough, like the compendium and a few other things here and there. Pay attention to these character portraits and their persona portraits. That's going to be important for uh, the finale, by the way. Just, just pay attention to them a little bit. God, it's been so long since we've actually seen all the initial personas. Like, I know I took a little while, like, maxing out, uh, maxing out a lot of those social links earlier on. And it took, yeah, there, there's Yukiko's, yeah. Anyway, I know it took me a little while to max out a few of the social links and to and to upgrade the personas but you know hey it all came to a head eventually so yeah one more episode and that'll be a series this is probably the longest running series on my channel, and it's one I've grown quite attached to. I love this game, you know? It, sure, it's it's pretty anime and it does a few goofy things here and there, but at the end of the day, this is one of my favorite S&T games. Now, I know some people might scoff at that, but I feel that this game was... It just hit a lot of the right notes, you know? And I'm gonna save a lot more of the emotionally sappy crap for the next update whenever this series is actually done, but yeah, I have sincerely enjoyed this playthrough. I've enjoyed this playthrough, I've enjoyed replaying this game again, and being able to share a few little tidbits I know, or share a game that I really like with, uh, with the rest of you. This series should have been finished so long ago, but, you know, I don't know. Stuff happens, I guess. I don't have much of an excuse for it. I'm sorry. But don't worry, it's it's gonna be finished. It's gonna be finished soon. Very soon. This is the second to last episode, by the way. And the next one is the finale. And then there will be the extra video, but that won't take too long to get done.
So yeah. All right. On the next update, it's time for the finale. It's time for the final showdown with Margaret and Izanami. And time for us to get that true ending. So until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will catch you in the next update. See you then.